Are you seeing me on your screen? Am I full on your screen? Yeah. Okay, everybody should be seeing just me now, spotlight. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another session of the Natural Remedies Kitchen, vegan nutrition cooking and nutrition course. I am Davina Gail Harris, your host. And today we will be covering food combination and the salads. And we'll be doing some exciting salads that's gonna whet your appetite, get the taste buds drooling, and which is also gonna nourish the body's system. It's gonna alkalinize your cells, it's gonna build your blood, it's gonna keep your colon and your alimentary canal completely clean and free of trash. And it's going to help you to reverse the signs of aging. And it's going to give you good spirits. All right. With that said, I will go a little bit into our devotional for this morning so we can get started on the right leg. All right. So reasons for reform. Why are you here? You are here on this course because you're into some sort of reformation. So you may want to reform your health. Um, you may just want to have knowledge to help others. You may want to increase your knowledge in cooking so you can help others to reform their health. Um, whatever the reasons is, it's, there is reasons for reforming your life. All right, so reasons for reform. We have a few reasons for reform. Today, we're going to just look at one reason for reform. Another day, we can look at another reason for reform. And I will be reading to you from the book, Councils on Diets and Food. And I'll be reading from chapter one and page one. No, not page one, paragraph one. And it says, we, one of our number one reasons for reform is for the glory of God. All right, only one lease of life is granted to us, right? Only one. And that's why we don't want to get sick because we want to preserve that one lease of life and we want to get the most out of that lease of life. We want to have good quality of life. We all want to live long. We all actually want to live forever. And sorry, there's a mango on my nose. Had a, had a mango feast this morning for breakfast. <laughs> all right. And the inquiry with everyone should be, how can I invest my powers so that they may yield the greatest profit? How can I do most of the glory? How can I do most for the glory of God and the benefit, benefit of my fellow men? So that should be the question that we should ask ourselves. How can I do the most for the glory of God and the most of benefit my fellow men? All right. How can we do this? For life is valuable only as it is used for the attainment of these ends. So until you're doing that, you're really not living a valuable life, right? Your life is just all about you, which is of no value to anyone else, not even to God, not to your fellow men. Now, our first duty towards God and our fellow being is that of self-development, okay? It's important. Our first duty towards God and towards our fellow man is that of self-development. Every faculty with which the creator has endowed us should be cultivated to the highest degree of perfection. Now, that we may be able to do the greatest amount of good of which we are capable. Hence, that time is spent to good account, which is used in the establishment and preservation of physical and mental health. We cannot afford to dwarf or cripple any function of body or mind. As surely as we do this, we must suffer the consequences. And that's why some of us are here enrolled on this course, because 
either we are suffering the consequences of neglect or we have family members that are suffering the consequences or we want to prevent that from happening. With that said, I just want to thank everyone for joining the sports. Thank you for being here today. And I must say we're actually public today on YouTube. And there's a reason for that. I just want to share today's lesson with the world to help someone else, right? So even though this is a paid course today, um, it is being offered free. It's a very, very important course um, lesson today. And it is good that we share this information. So it is public. You can share the link. You can just copy the link from um, where it says live on YouTube on your screen. If it does say that, that is, or maybe down where you have the three dots, you can go there and you can copy the link and you can share it with someone else. Now, at this time, I am gonna just wanna welcome, I know my colleague Margot is probably busy, but today is the first that you're gonna see her. So I'm just gonna ask her if it is possible for her to pray for us at this time, and then we'll just introduce her. You will see her later on in the week when she, Myrtle is also known as our yogurt queen, by the way, all right? So you will see her later on in the week when she teaches you um, a few lessons. Myrtle, are you able to unmute yourself and just pray for us at this time? Okay, I will. Thank you. And since you said that they're going to see me, let me put my face on for a few. Okay. All right, at this time, we're going to ask everyone, Bow your heads as we pray. And let me. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings on us. Some of us, in spite of what we're going through, you still have blessed us. In spite of what we've done, you've still blessed us. Thank you for this platform where we can learn better ways of nourishing our bodies and our minds and our spirits and our souls. Help us to do everything that we can because the body, the body is not just one part. It involves all the different segments to make a whole. Help us to do everything that's possible so that we can serve you to the fullest. Thank you again for loving us. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for everyone that's here. May we all learn from each other and be blessed is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Myrtle. You're welcome. And you can say hello to the class, to the students, um, so they know Myrtle is one of our directors of this course. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Myrtle. I'm not seeing any faces. I think I know Grace um, from previous class. And I'm going to put on the full screen. And I'm seeing someone by the name of Katie, but I'm not seeing any faces. But anyway, you guys, um, welcome. And I should be back on tomorrow to teach you guys um, two nut milks, cashew and almonds. But for today, I'm gonna be in and out because I do work, I'm self-employed. So I am gonna be working in the background. All right, so I'll periodically I may come in, you may see my face or you may not, but I'm trying to listen as you guys go along. So congratulations on your soups and your stock from yesterday. And do have a wonderful class today. Back over to you, Davina. Thank you very much, Marco. You're welcome. I think I still have you on my Okay. Are you seeing me now? No. Now you're seeing me. All right, lovely. All right, so today we're doing uh, one of them topics that I actually don't like to do, all right? Now, it's not my favorite topic at all to do. I literally just live by that topic. I don't like teaching it, and there is a reason for that. When anything is too controversial, I don't like to go there because I don't like war. I like peace, but I just do what I know I have to do for my body and I get on with it. Now, I have, unfortunately, I have to teach this session today. Normally, it is taught by Brother Benjamin, the late Brother Benjamin Fungai Chakadona. 
um, whenever he's not around that I have to take that topic up and he's no longer around. So now I have to teach it until I find someone else I could lend this on. All right, so <laughs> I will teach you what I know. And um, just to let you know that we have, if you're subscribed to the Natural Remedies Kitchen channel, it's pretty hot where I'm at, by the way. If you are subscribed to the Natural Remedies Kitchen channel, you will be able to find other presentations on food combination done by Brother Benjamin Fungai Chapadona. I mean, his name is probably, his full name is not there, but you may find, if you type in Benjamin, maybe you'll be able to find it. Or the website, the Natural Remedies Kitchen website is down at the moment because it is being refurbished. But when it is back up, you will be able to access all the student videos from over a year now. So you will be able to access them and you will be able to see all those that he has taught on food combination. And that will make your life much easier. And whatever questions I am not able to answer for you satisfactorily today, you'll be able to get answers from him, from the videos. All right, so at this time, I will share my screen and I will ask those who have captured the fan if they could share it with me as well so I could get a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> or they can get another fan. Okay, all right. So I, I realized the, the group cooking class seven is still pretty busy right now, even though class is on. So I'm gonna ask all those, like Boosie, I'm gonna ask someone who is in class just a message in the class group and say, class is in session, please come to class. All right, so um Everybody can come to class. Are you seeing my screen? Are you seeing this very lovely, colorful chart? Yes. All right, wonderful. Let me see if I can just take my face off. Yes, um, we can see it. Okay, all right, that's nice. Let me see if I can. You can move my face from there. If you can move my face off your screen, that would be good. I'm trying to. You know, I have my thumbnail on your screen. If you're able to minimize that to just that single speaker's view, just a, a line, you won't see anything. So it won't block um, anything from the chart. So you'll be able to see the entire chart. Let me see how I do that on my phone. Hmm, I don't even know how to do that from my side. But just let you know that it is possible, especially if you're on a computer. I know how to do it from a computer. I don't know how to do it from the mobile phone. All right, so here we go. This is a food combination chart. And the, the format of the lesson today will take, we'll go through the food combination chart quickly. We're off to a late start. Um, we're off to a late start because we, we waited a little bit for the devotion. But we'll go to the food combination chart quickly as well as some health principles then we will do um i will give you some tips on making an amazing outstanding salad and then we will have a demonstration and when i'm giving you the tips on the salad i'll be using a powerpoint and we have joanne i don't see her login but joanne good luck will come in maybe a little bit later right and and um we'll sort of talk you through that together and then we'll have um, two demonstrations for you. And um, what we will then have going forward is every Friday, we will do a different type of salad based on what you have learned from today's lesson. So every Friday until the course is finished, you will do a different type of salad. So I just wanna say before I even go any further, why we're doing food combination and then we're doing salad. I just want to say that salads is supposed to be the main meal in your life, right? It is not the, it's not the beans, it's not the grains, it is the salad, right? That is supposed to be your main course meal. Everything else is supposed to be a side dish. I know we have grown up in a society that has taught us completely differently and we have practiced things completely differently where our salad is normally the side dish. I think I just heard Charlene's voice. Are you there, Charlene? Okay, maybe not today. Somebody else's voice I heard, right. 
we we have lived in a society where we have practiced practiced things completely differently where the salad is a side dish and it is eaten after we have eaten the main course when we're full and then there's barely any space left then we try to eat the salad and then you look at the plate you got a small salad in the first place and out of that small salad you still have leftovers no 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 you're supposed to fill up on the salad and then if you have any space left you can now eat the dead food and when i say dead food i'm talking about the beans i'm talking about the grains i'm talking about the cooked vegetables right that's what i'm talking about when i talk about the dead food i'm not talking about fresh food that should not be anywhere on our tables in the very first place eggs cheese milk those need to be off our tables right so i am talking about the good food but the one that is cooked that is what i'm calling the dead food why i call it dead food even though it's not fully dead once it goes on the fire we start losing nutrients mind you there are some foods when cooked they do get some increase nutritional value for example your carrots and uh, some tomatoes as well however please take note while you do get some additional nutrients from them once flame touches it you do lose some of the nutrients so as a result i don't necessarily promote a 100 percent raw diet but i do promote a good percentage of a raw diet because i believe if you want to live you should eat living foods. You want to die, you can go ahead and eat dead food. Okay, so even those foods that you will cook every now and again, you need to strike a balance, right? So sometimes you can cook it, sometimes you can have it raw. All right, now what am I going on here? I'm going on the chart now. And this is a food combination chart. Uh, this idea is not from me. It's not from Brother Benjamin either. It is from um, a couple. I don't remember their names now, but um, I could um, post in a group afterwards, right? One of the videos that Brother Benjamin did, he did a good explanation of the couple. They have been around since, the, um, since Ellen White's time. And uh, they, okay, so firstly, they're Adventists, right? So for those who are on here who are not Adventists, um if you were at the lecture when Bussi did the case for why go vegan i believe she may have or may not have touched on the fact that um you you have a quite a few adventists who are vegans or who are plant-based and there's a reason for that back in the 1800s our founder for our church received a vision from the lord with a health message in it right directing her right back to genesis 1 verse 29 that says um what does genesis 1 verse 29 says anyone who's in the class can you read that for us please quickly genesis 1 verse 29 genesis 1 verse 29 just read that so the vision pointed her back to that chapter and that should be our diet right anyone just read at genesis 1 verse 29 you can read yeah but you have to read loud though so everybody in the class can hear it. so if you want to come over here that's good and god said behold i have given you heavy herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree and the wish of the food of the tree seed to you it shall be for me god here Come, come closer, come closer over this side. Right. So it's going to be read again. If you cannot hear, please say something. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. Excellent. You hear what God gave us when he designed this human machinery? When God designed this living machinery before sin entered our life and before diseases took onset, we got fruits, fruits and seeds, yes. right? Yes. Right. Fruits and seeds we got. And then after we sinned, we got some vegetables added to that diet, right? 
Now, I just want to say that's the diet that we should be back on, right? And um, this couple, they have been around from Ellen White's time and they designed the chart originally. And I've just done a little bit of additional studies and created something similar and added more fruits that, um, that were missing from theirs that are now more popular because theirs is from like the 1800s. So <laughs> now more fruits that we're probably familiar with that we have available to us that were not on the chart. So I've just done some additional studies. This chart is available for sale. And I don't want to say this because Myrtle did warn me, don't come here to this class and say um, it will be available for sale soon. <laughs> she needs to know that we can purchase this chart today. But I promise you, my designer has assured me that I will get this back soon, all right? There will be additional stuff on this as well as it, including a raw food pyramid will be added to this chart as well as some other quotations right now let me teach you how you use this chart here it's very colorful and um it's designed with all these colors to just help you to when things are more colorful we are more attracted to it and we pay more attention and we see it better basically and we remember it better as well now i want us to look in this yellow box right here where my cursor is right and these are the keys that tells you how to read this chart. So if you look in any line that has two X's in it, it is saying these dishes, these items make a good combination, right? It's compatible with each other. It combines well. So if you're going to combine them in a salad or whatever, how you want to combine them, it, um, it works well. If it says FC, it means it is fairly compatible right you can have it but if you're if you and you as a person have it if it if it goes against you then don't have it because it is fairly compatible which means it may work for me and it may not work for you if it says not recommended then basically the same thing all right it's not recommended that you should make that do that combination and then nc means it is completely not compatible so you just don't go there. Now we have some numbers. Before I go on these numbers, which are at the top with the top row, right, with, on the columns going down, I am gonna look at these pictures here and look at the numbers uh, on the pictures on the outside. And why? Because I am that sort of person who reads the pictures better than I read the numbers, the, the writing. So number one, on number one here, down here, this beautiful, um group of citrus we can see the lime we can see the oranges we can see the grapefruit we can see the clementines all right citrus fruits are acid fruits that's number one number two fruits is called acid it's acid as well as sub acid fruits i can see the berries there i can see the blueberry i can see the blackberry i can see the strawberry uh i can see the raspberry maybe there are other fruits as well we will look in the numbers on here and number three, I can see the sweet palms. So that's our banana and our, what's this one? Am I alone in the class? I wanna hear from you. You can unmute yourselves on this class and just say something little. You see in this fruit, the, the kiwi, right? All right. That's the kiwi, kiwi. Excellent. Excellent, I love that. So now I'm hearing from a gentleman. That's absolutely amazing. You have just made my day. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Now, um, okay, you're welcome. Now on the, I'm now going on the num on the right written up section. But before I go, just quickly breeze through these. Number four, you're looking at some neutral fruits and some seeds. So I can see dried apricots. I can see some dried figs. I can see, uh, what's this? I, I can see nuts. I can see almond nuts. I can see walnuts. I can see cashew. I can see pecan. I can see nuts in this section here. And then go up to number five, it's showing me the grains, right? And corn, by the way, I can see corn in the grain section, but yes. corn is a massive debate. If it is a grain, a fruit, or a vegetable, it's all of them. Um, I can see legumes here. So your peas, your beans, your sprouts. And I can see number seven, the melons, and a whole variety of them. As you can see, we have watermelon here. We've got, what's this yellow one called? Is it honeydew? 
our gala melon. There's like loads of different varieties of melon. We see them all in number seven. And then number eight, I can see some more beautiful succulent tomatoes. And that will take in other stuff. And then number nine, I can see a beautiful box filled with green leafy vegetables. All right, so I am gonna see if I find Charlene and just make her co-host as she's just arrived. Okay, so that's, that's done. All right, so now I'm gonna be looking at the box inside the chart. So I'm gonna remove the pictures a little bit so we can see. All right, let's go up a little bit more. I wanna be able to see the bottom part of the chart as well. Um, I wanna make this screen even fuller. To it. Let me see if I can make the screen fuller. Nothing happens. Same thing. Okay, I think um, that's it. It's it's covered up to number nine. And there's only nine sections. So we're gonna look read up this chart now, so we can understand how to use this beautiful chart. All right. Um. So under the column that say column and row, we are at number one up here where my cursor is, column and row. So number one column, and I'm scrolling down to number one row. And in number one row to my, my left, right? To my left, it says these are the acid fruits, right? And I'm looking in the column number one, and it said I can combine the acid fruits together they combine well, they're fairly, com they're very compatible, right? It has two X's. Now I'm gonna go under number six, number six, um, number six column and number one row, which it says NR means it is not recommended. What is not recommended? Number one and number six, what is number six? So let's go down and see what is number six. Can anybody read for me what is in number six? Thank you. Legume. Right, so it is saying number one and number six is not recommended except in the case of lemon and cranberry, right? Lemon and cranberry is fine, but that's it. You can put lemon and you can put cranberry with your legumes, but nothing else from number one should go with your legumes. So look what else is in number one, your grapefruit. So you shouldn't have your bean salad with your grapefruit slices in it, right? Or your orange slices with your beans. You shouldn't have that. Um, your mandarin with your, let's see what else is in number six. Your mandarin with your lentils, no. All right, so your, your, your mandarin with your whole wheat crackers or your whole wheat bread as well is not recommended. Your clementine, you know, so the only thing that you can put from number one group with your beans is your lemon and cranberries, okay? Do you understand that? You got that? Let's look at something else. Now, number four, I'm looking at number two column and I'm going down to number four. It says two X's here. It's compat compatible, it combines well together. So it's saying fruits, Number one and number four. So we know that number one is our citruses, right? Our acid fruits. So it is say it goes well. You can have them with your avocado. You can have them with your olives. You can have them with your ripe coconut. You can have them with your almonds. You can have them with your Brazil nuts. You can have them with your cashew nuts. You can have them with your hazelnuts and your filbrecks, which is the hazelnuts. You can have them with your macadamia. You can have them with pecans. Basically, you can have them with your nuts and your seeds. So you can have them with flax seed. You can have them with pumpkin seed. Right, it is saying it is, it combines well together. So don't have a problem whatsoever. If you make a cheesecake and you use some cashew and you use some lime as your, your acid, it means it is fine. You can do that if you want, okay? It combines well, it will not affect your digestion. By the way, I, I, that is something I should explain. When the food is not combined properly, you get sour stomach, right? So it stays in your stomach and it rots. When you get sour stomach, you get bad breath. 
you get a sour dismeanor or what you call it now, sour behavior, right? Um, you get bad stomach and bad behavior, full stop. Now let's look at another one. Number, I'm seeing NR here except for papaya and the line of number two and number six. What is number two? In number two, we have apricots, we have bananas, we have apples, we have the Jamaican Otaiti apples. I mean, Jamaican apples, or it's also known as Otaiti apple. Other places, it's also known as um, Malay, Malay rose apples. Um, it's, it's, it's known as quite a, few, uh, quite a few different names elsewhere. It is original from Malaysia. And that's why where the word Malay comes from. So if you're gonna search for this apple to see what it is, you can search on Malay apples, Malay, M-A-L-A-Y, Malay apples, and you will see them. Beautiful red apples when they're well ripe, the outside is like almost purple. Right, so it is saying number two, and which one was I? Number two and number six does not combine well, it's not recommended. Um, except in the case of papaya. So what is in number six? Again, that is your legumes. So, legumes. right. Would you want to eat your black bean with, what, what would you eat your black bean with? Would you want to eat your black bean with dried bananas? Uh, no, if that was with apricots, or your black bean with ripe banana? I mean, I can't really see those dishes, you know, or your black bean with guava. I can't see that tasting nice <laughs> either, right, from a chef's perspective. But it is clearly saying to you, it's not, a, it's not a recommended, it's not an ideal combination in terms of digestion. It is not recommended, right? It has one X, basically. Now, except for the papaya, you could have your papaya with your beans and... Uh, is this green papaya or ripe papaya? I, I, I don't know, but I think this is talking about ripe fruits. Now, um, let's look at another one. Let's look at number seven and number five. Number five, because it says FC, which means not compatible any at all. You should never ever try it, right? So number five is saying barley, buckwheat, corn, millet, oats, rice, rye, quinoa, spelt, wheat, sorghum, brown rice, bulgur, popcorn. I, the only thing I want in my popcorn is a little uh, vegan butter, whole wheat bread, pasta, and crackers, right? So that's number five. Uh, it's saying number seven. Let's look what's in number seven. Oh, so number seven is our melons. Right, so your cantaloupe, your watermelon, your crenshaw, your honeydew, your musk melon, your Persian, your gala, gala melon, your cherry. I, I don't, beer, just let me let you know that I don't know all of these melons, all right? I, I don't know all of them, what some of them look like, but I do know most of them on here because working with food, um, you do learn a lot of strange stuff. A lot of strange food that you never see in the supermarket, you get from somebody who carries them to your restaurant or so for you to sell them. So number five and number seven is saying it's not recommended. So it's not recommended that you have your melons with your rice. So don't have a salad. I know it is summer. And a lot of times if you go to Weight rows or yeah, weight rows or some of these big supermarkets. Sometimes you find these, you get these recipe books free that you know, like they're trying to promote stuff that they have inside there. So they put together these recipe books with the most amazing images that actually makes your mouth water. And you will see something like wild rice or even just brown rice or your white rice. You will see in a salad with like melon and strawberries and grapes. No, this is saying do not combine your melons with your grains. That was number five and number seven. Number five and number seven together is FC. Oh, it says FC. Was that what I was doing? Number five and number seven? I think I mixed something up because I thought I was doing something that was not recommended. Number seven and number six. 
Okay, well, That's either way, number five and number seven is fairly compatible. So fairly compatible um, is you can have, but number six and number seven, which number six is the legumes with your melon, it's not recommended. And then NC, number seven with number nine. So that's your melons with your number nine has things like your asparagus, your artichokes, your broccoli, your cabbage, your cauliflower. Your green leafy vegetables is in number nine. So your melons with your green leafy vegetables, no, not recommended. So you may see a salad, something like Waldorf salad, which is a fruit and it is served with vegetables as well. So it is not recommended that you put the vegetables in there, right? Which is a very typical, a very common, well-known salad and a very popular, I must use the word, a very popular salad um, in the States that people love but it's not recommended at all. It's not compatible any at all. So it's not a good thing to have. That way you definitely will get a sour stomach because the melon will have to wait for all the grains or the legumes to digest first before it gets to go down. And as a result, the melon, as you know, if you cut a piece of melon and you leave it out there in the sun or in the warm or leave it out of the fridge, in no time it starts de breaking down. You notice it starts degenerating. It starts to rot. Flies start to come around. Picture that. That's what's happening in your stomach, right? The melon, the fruit, whatever. When food is not compatible and it's not recommended that you combine them together, this is what happens. In your stomach, it becomes sour. It starts to rot in your stomach while it waits for the other food to digest first, right? So let me just give you a, a little better example and I give a bit more explanation. Melons have a lot of water in them, right? It's, um, it's, almo it's almost pure water. It isn't, but it's almost pure water, very little fiber. Water and fiber, that's what it really is. Some, some vitamins and stuff, but it's mostly water. Now, the more water a substance has, it's recommended that you eat it first, right? So if you're gonna have, let's say you're gonna have some grapes and you're gonna have some ripe bananas as well. Uh, it's uh, probably best that you eat the grapes first because they have more water, which means it will digest first. It will pass through the system faster than the banana actually passes through the body system. But if you eat the banana first, or probably a better example that I should give is, you eat some rice first because this is what we often do, right? You'll probably eat some dinner first. So you eat a nice big meal of some rice and some beans taste absolutely delicious and you're full up on that. And then afterwards you go and you eat an apple or you go and you eat a banana. That rice, which is probably gonna take about two to three hours to digest, to go through your system, the banana or the fruit have to sit down and wait for this starchy food are this high protein food to digest first before it gets a chance to start breaking down. But it's gonna sit here in your stomach and while it waits for it turn to digest, it's gonna start rottening in your stomach. When it rottens in your stomach, fermentation, it's, so you are gonna have fermentation. What do you get when you get fermentation? What do you get when you get fermentation? A nice glass of red wine or white wine. So, you're probably not going around to buy a bottle of Chardonnay, but you're having it nonetheless, right? From poor and improper food combination and eating sometimes and drinking at the same time, right? You do get that. So that is what happens when, uh, why it is not compatible for you to combine them together because it creates sour stomach. It leads to acidosis. All right, with that said, I will now come off this section of the food combination chart. If you understand it, say amen. Davina, I have one question. How okay, okay. can you differentiate then if one of the fruits that you're having is not on the list? Is there something to go by to know? How do you put it in a um, fruit? You can or? just, yeah, you can research it. That's what I did. I researched them. And yes, you can find, you will find information out there that will tell you if a fruit is acid or subacid. And what you do find is you may have some fruits that is of 
is listed, you may find the same fruit as acid or subacid. I, I do believe that at times it may depend on the region or the season where it's more acid than subacid. And I believe it's also where it falls on the pH chart where that makes it more acid or less acid. But yeah, you can find the information out there if it is not listed on the chart here. And then we ask questions as well in the group or you know from others to find out. But most of your time, the problem is not even so much when fruits are combined with fruits, but a problem often comes in when we have the food, especially if we are a meat eater, we eat the meat, we eat the rice, we eat the beans, and then we pack the fruits in after that. You know, that's when the problem comes in because Fruits, let's say if you eat some banana and some grapes, surely the grape needs more water, so it's gonna digest before the banana. But then again, the banana is gonna digest in like, what, 30 minutes. So you don't really have much of a problem there. They're going down quickly anyway. It's not gonna stay in your stomach and ferment. The problem is when you are gonna eat those foods first, that's gonna take, you're looking at two to four hours for digestion or even six hours for digestion. And then you pack something that needs only half an hour after it so that thing has to wait has to wait for four hours before it gets a chance to, to for the bodies to start for the body to start working on it obviously it's gonna go off it's just like you leave your tomato out there that you cut and you leave it in your kitchen out of the fridge for two you leave it for half an hour you can go back you leave it even for an hour your tomato will still be fine your watermelon will still be fine but you leave it for two hours out of the fridge and it's going to start breaking down, especially if you leave it in the sun. And why I'm comparing the sun to the stomach is that inside the stomach is not a cool place. The organs produce a lot of heat, right? So inside the stomach is actually a warm place. If you vomit, you notice you don't vomit out a cold vomit. It's more warm than cold, right? If you are somebody who has acid reflux, and that's where it comes from as well. Poor combination causes acid reflux, as well as obviously there are other things behind acid reflux, eating and drinking at the same time, eating and then going to lounge, eating and going to sleep, lying down, um, eating and going to do vigorous exercise. These are some of the things behind acid reflux. Chewing too fast. All my dad would always say when we were growing up, don't cut and swallow, cut and chew. <laughs> and I'm sure you oftentimes probably tell that to your children as well, because they put one bite and in no time you see the spoon going up again, that just gets swallowed. There are no teeth in the stomach. That's why we have a whole, what, 32 or 42? I don't know. I think maybe about 32 teeth in the mouth that we should chew at least 32 times and masticate the food well before we actually swallow it because digestion begins in the mouth. So a lot of the problem is not necessarily when you combine foods together, but when you um, do the, those that take so much longer to digest, because a banana and, um, so as I said, grapes, that, that won't really, even though they have two different digestion time, it won't really cause a problem in your stomach. Unless, of course, you, have, you don't have a stomach, <laughs> right? Then that's a different story. All right, any other questions? I'm going down to the second half of the chart. Um, and then I'm just gonna share a few quotations here with you. And then I'm gonna show you the raw food, a raw food pyramid, right? Um, my designer has not finished with my raw food pyramid as yet. And the only draft I have of it is with pen and you cannot read my writing. So I am showing you Another raw food pyramid that is, I guess, similar. All right, so principles of health. Chewing food thoroughly, chew the food thoroughly is crucial to proper digestion as digestion begins in the mouth. Food should be properly combined with the saliva before you swallow it. And as I said, there are no teeth in the stomach and that's why we get so much in our mouth to chew and we should use them up. And use both sides, by the way. Your dentist will tell you, you should use both sides of your mouth. Don't just use one side to chew. Use both sides so you keep your teeth balanced. Right? All right. Another quote that I just want to highlight is, liquid foods are discouraged. Why is that so? They slow the process of digestion as the liquid must first be absorbed by the body 
before the food is digested. Okay, uh, food should not be washed down, okay? My father always tells us that, boy, don't wash the food down. So food should not be washed down. So don't go and eat and come with this big glass of drinks. Drink half an hour before you eat or at least an hour after you eat. Drinking should be done between meals. Food should not be washed down. The more liquid there is taken into the stomach with the meal, the more difficult it will be for the food to digest. For liquid must first be absorbed by the body before the food can be digested. So I do know that there is a juice craze out there and there is a soup craze as well. They have their places because I do realize when someone is sick, it is hard to get them to eat. But the truth is maybe they shouldn't be eating because maybe their problem is as a result of overeating and improper eating. And the body really and truly needs to go on some fast, right? Fasting for a period will actually help you to alleviate diseases. So, but juices, as I say, has its place. But don't go living on a juice diet, especially ladies who want to lose weight. We go for this juicing, juicing, juicing. And yes, we do lose weight. You do drop a lot of weight quickly. But when you go back to your normal life of eating, the weight goes right back up. Right. That's not the way how you lose weight. I ate, right, for my weight loss. And I lost the weight and I've kept it off. And it does not come back on, right? I mean, I know how to get it back on because I know how to, I, I, I help people to gain weight who needs to gain weight. And when I go on their diet that I put them on, especially if I have them at um, my premises where I'm treating them and I, I eat what I give the client, I eat it as well. So if um, someone is trying to gain weight and I have them there, and I feed them a healthy diet that helps them to gain weight, of course, I gain some as well. So right now I'm looking a little bit more plump than when I did the course the last time because I just had one client who um, I give a particular diet to. All right, so now just want to say, moving on, another point is eat more raw fruits and vegetables in their natural state. Make your salads the largest part of the meal the practice of eating the raw food first before the main course will stimulate and assist digestion and help avoid overeating of cooked foods. The healthy Hunza diet consists mostly of raw fruits and vegetables, plus a variety of grains. And if you want to know more about the healthy Hunza diet, please Google and do your research on the healthy Hunza diet, okay? Um, do not overeat. Eat sparingly for strength and not for drunkenness. If the stomach is burdened with too much food, even of the best kind, the brain force is called to aid of digestion, digestive organs. There is a rush of blood to the head and then a benumb sensation upon the brain, making it almost impossible to keep the eyes open. So there is no such thing as niggeritis. It just means overeating, okay? Overeating has a worse effect upon the system than overworking. So many use their teeth to dig their grave. That's not a quote on this, by the way. Um, but many use their teeth to dig their grave. And I'm going to say, try not to do the same. When properly prepared, olives like nuts supply the place of butter and flesh meats. The oil as eaten in olive is far preferably preferable to animal oil or fat. It serves as a laxative. Its use will be found beneficial to consumptives and it is healing to an inflamed, irritated stomach. So all your friends out there who is suffering from ulcer, you need to take a screenshot of this and send them to them or buy that book and send it to them, Ministry of Healing. Grains, fruit, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. What did I say? Grains, fruit, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. These foods prepared in as simple and natural manner 
as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. They impart a strength, a power of endurance, and a vigor of intelligence that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet in order to maintain health. A sufficient supply of good nourishing food is needed. So Genesis 1 verse 29, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is up on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And the creator who designed, who designed this living machinery, I believe above all persons, he should know what is best to keep this living machinery functioning effectively. Now, I just want to read a quotation for you, which is in black here. There are, oops, sorry, have I done something? Okay. There are several fruits that are vegetables that develop from the blossom of the nightshade family. Okay, so this is what always caused a controversy, but I hope this will put it to rest. If it's going through anybody's mind at this time, I'll read again. There are several fruits that are vegetables that are developed from the blossom of the nightshade family, like tomatoes, aubergines, eggplant, and peppers. These garden vegetables, often referred to as fruits, like potato, breadfruit, squash, pumpkin, cucumber, chocho, okra, are vegetables and should not be combined with tree fruits like apple, peaches, guava, mango, pears, etc. These should be eaten as vegetables. All right. Next quote over here. See the potato in the bag and the sack here? It's called roots or tubers and bulbs of the plant. The potato, the sweet potato, the onions, the shallot, the garlic, the carrots, parsnip, radish, turnips, and beets. These are root tubers. Then over here, you have stems or stalks of the plant. So you see the celery, picture of the celery. Other things that are considered as stems or stalks of the plant are asparagus, celery, rhubarb, wild rice, and leaves. Others, um, leaves of plants, edible leaves. So we're looking at the kale, the, the rutabaga, the mustard leaves, the cabbage, the cauliflower, cauliflower, sorry, the Brussels sprouts, the broccoli, the pop chow or bok chow, whichever one you call it, the Chinese leaf, the rhubarb, the cavallo nero, or it's also called cavallo nero, it's also called black cabbage, right? And spinach. So these are called leaves of plants, so they're edible leaves. We have now as well, fruits of the herbaceous plants. These are the tomatoes, the aubergines, the peppers, the cucumber, the pumpkin, the zucchini, and the squash. And then we have the flowers of the plant. So the flowers, you have artichoke, cauliflower. Um, I believe the sorrel comes here as well, but I'm not 100% sure to be honest. And then you have the seeds and it's called seeds and are pods of the plants. These are like your beans, your peas, your corn, your lentils, and like your flax seeds. All right, so that covers this chart. The bit that needs to now go on it. Let me see if I can find it. Find the other bit. Okay. Can't find the other bit at the moment, but it's the raw food pyramid. I will just post it in the chat, in the group, in the classroom. And then you can um, you can look at it later, right? You can look at it later, or I can voice note that information across. So you're seeing now my screen of um, salads, and this is now the exciting part of the class. If you have any questions about the chart just now, besides where you can get this chart, so I did say at the beginning that. Um, these charts will be available for sale very shortly. I'm just waiting for the designer to finish um, some touching up bits and getting the raw food pyramid on the chart with some additional quotations from different authors, right? That is just absolutely fantastic. And this chart, when you buy it, put it on your fridge. Um, we'll probably get it with the magnets on it. I'm not sure if that will be done, but it would be good to put this chart on your fridge. So the farm, the whole family can see it, right? Now, what do we have here? Oh, this is not the beginning. Let's go up to the beginning. Lovely. 
So we see this looking beautiful. This is what we call living enzymes. This is what your gut needs to help you um, to digest your cooked foods afterwards. So coat your gut with your living enzymes, right? First, this is your natural digestive enzymes. And as I'm right here looking on the salad and I can see the onion, just a reminder, even though I know Myrtle will remind you when she does, um, when she does the onion crackers, later on, I think in about week two or week three, she will do yogurt. And we are hoping that you'll be able to squeeze the onion crackers in at the same time, because there's no way you can do this course and not learn how to do proper dehydration and see the amazing and wonderful foods that you can get by using a dehydration machine, a dehydrator. So if you don't have a dehydrator, I'm gonna say after this class, go on and buy one for that lesson in either week two or week three, how you dehydrate stuff, some fantastic stuff. It's just mind blowing some of the stuff that Myrtle can teach you from the dehydration. Now, you see that onion there, we should have for our gut health, for good gut health, to help you to feed your good gut bacteria your natural prebiotics and natural probiotics. And I must say, I am someone who had polyps, who had um, a large massive tumor in my gut, who had SIBO, I had a lot of gut disorder and I never take a probiotic. I take, this is my probiotic and my prebiotic right here you're looking at, right? Remember this course is designed off my personal journey to health recovery and if this, it works. So I did not come up with this idea because when I was being helped, I had no idea about half of these stuff, right? So the idea was never mine, but I was taught to use and eat one raw onion per day. And of course, as a chef, it's only natural that I'm gonna find creative ways how to enjoy one raw onion. Everybody knows that the raw onion is not very sweet. <laughs> it's not like eating a cup of cherries, no. All right, so. I must say most of these salads here are by myself or students from previous classes. So I'm hoping that as I go through, I will give credit to Caesar as it is due. Now, here we go. What is a salad? It's simple, 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 simple. It's pieces of food containing a minimum of what, one raw ingredient. But that's what is listed on, um, when you go to research, what is a salad? That is what you're gonna get, but no, you can't have a salad with one raw vegetable. That is not a salad. That is cooked bed food, okay? With one little piece of vegetable in it. A salad must be an abundance of raw vegetable. Wrap it up. How about five to seven pieces of raw vegetables in your salad, all right? Slide. There are five categories um, of salad or five types of salad, right? What you're looking at, if you go to a restaurant, you can order what they call a green salad, which is basically these. Um, and sometimes they may throw a couple of toppings and stuff on top. Something over here looks similar to a green salad. Only thing you'll probably never find this one in a restaurant. What this is, this is the tuna cactus. All right, the tuna cactus, it does make an amazing salad. It's absolutely delicious and it does not taste like aloe vera, okay? So don't be scared. It actually tastes very lemony and very light and refreshing. And if you add some olive oil, and some lemon juice and a pinch of salt to it, it goes like, wow, wow, wow. You will lick your fingers. It's very good for your blood health. It's very good for lowering blood pressure, lowering blood sugar. It's outstanding when it comes on to blood sugar, by the way. So a green salad is um, basically your leaves, your rocket leaves, your lettuce leaves, your variety, you know, variety of lettuces, your spinach, your, your, your leaves. It's your basic green salad, all right? Um, here's my cursor. Then you have a vegetable salad. What is a vegetable salad? It's basically an upgrade from your green salad. So you want to throw in other vegetables now that is um, non-green. So your red peppers, maybe some tomatoes, some onion, other things, right? You're going to step it up for your vegetable salad. Then you have things like your pasta salads and your grain salads and your legume salads. So something like, um, uh, what's a potato salad would come under here. Cause you know, you cook the potato for the potato salad. The pasta, you also cook the pasta. The grains, 
you also cook the grains, even though you can also sprout, you can sprout the grains and these work as well, right? Sprouted grains and sprouted legumes work very much for your salad, right? Um, but most times these pasta salad, legume salad, grain salads, they are cooked and then you have a lot of vegetables cut up in them, small or medium size, that's fine. You can have that sometimes, but make sure most of your salad is from the green and the vegetable. Then you have um, a mixed salad. A mixed salad is a, or when you go to other types of salads, there's another PowerPoint that they're very closely um, cross-linked. You have a mixed salad, which it incorporates. So it's your green salad, but it will incorporate things like your meat substitute or your fish substitute or something like that. So you may want to have a slab of tofu or a slab of Satan. And I don't even like that term. It's called gluten. But this course, we don't really use gluten in this course, but I'm not saying that you can't use it. You can use it if you don't have a problem with, with it, right? But this course, as I said, is based off my journey. I can't take gluten. And that's why there's no gluten taught in here, right? Um, now, but you can use, so you have your salad, you can have a piece of um, grilled gluten or something like that on it. You can have your piece of pan fried um, tofu or some baked tofu. You can have some, uh, what do you call it, some soya pieces, the ones that are um, not from America. Uh, <laughs> and why I say not from America is because most of what comes from America is genetically modified and you don't want to have genetically modified soya. And then you have fruit salad, which we will not cover fruit salad today, even though it is on this PowerPoint. We will do that when we're doing the breakfast. Four parts, of, there are four main parts of your salad, right? And this is a fun bit. Four main parts of the salad, what are them? First, you need to have your base. And the base of your salad, um, the main salad is gonna sit on, the base sits on the plate. So you have a nice big clean plate. And for salads, you wanna use a white plate, all right? White, you can use other colors, you can use plates with design, but I'm telling you what looks most attractive. A plain white plate, big plate with a massive rim, okay? That you can hold on to, that will help to frame. It will actually naturally help to frame your salad. But there are things that you can actually use to frame your salads, and we'll go through that a little bit later. So the base is gonna sit directly on the plate. It's um, made up of your leaves. So it's basically your basic green salad. So you want to use a cup or two cups of something like your iceberg lettuce. Probably you can have a mix of lettuce, by the way. So you have different types of lettuce. You have iceberg, you have Boston, you have your loose pieces of romaine lettuce. You have um, your Lola Rosso, lots of different lettuces. So your green leaves is what you want to use as the base of your salads, right? Um, um, you can... You know, when you have the lettuce leaves, you can use it as a cup as well to, to put your salad in. So these, the leaves can be threaded. Your Chinese leaf as well can be used as a base of your salad, as long as you cut it finely, right? Um, your kale, and now with your kale, you can massage your kale. So before you use it as your base to help to break the cellulose, especially if you're someone that may have digestive issues or may have had digestive issues in the past, you can um, massage your kale or for some people, they blanch their kale first. You can do it how you like it. As for me, I reverse my gut disorders on completely raw with no heat touching my stuff, my food. But no one, one diet does not fit all. So even though that worked for me, it may not work for you, all right? so. I am going to say to you, you can massage your kale and marinate it, especially if you marinate it overnight with your olive oil, your lemon, and your salt. The next day, I am telling you, you, would, you will lick the plate, right? It will be so delicious, and it would have broken down um, the cellulose, and it will be easier for you to digest. Alternatively, you can blanch it first, and then you can use it as a base. Chop it up, put it in your food processor, whatever. Right, so um, then you have the body of the salad and this is my favorite section of the salad. And this is where, this is the most important um, section of the salad. It has the main content of the salad and that sits on top of the base of the salad. Then you have your dressing. No, that's actually my favorite part, the dressing. <laughs> well, clearly you can tell I love salads, all right? So 
the dressing, you can make your dressings creamy, you can make them in a vinaigrette. And even though I use the term vinaigrette, we don't use vinegar in this course. Not like I'm not saying don't use vinegar because I do have vinegar here at home. I have apple cider vinegar with the mother, but I use it externally only. Why do I not use it internally? Actually, I do use it internally. If I have a patient that has bowel cancer or something like that, I will use it, but I'm using it at night only. Why I don't recommend eating vinegar? It is alkaline, yes, it's gonna, it's gonna make your stomach acid alkaline. You need your stomach acid to be acid to digest your food properly. So I find I get a lot of patients who have been on vinegar water to lose weight. And I have to end up treating them for their, treating their stomach first before I help them to lose the weight. All right, so we use lemon here. Lemon works with the body. So it is acid where it needs to be acid and when it needs to be acid. And it is alkaline where it needs to be alkaline and when it needs to be alkaline. Okay, so here are your dressings. Anywhere you see in any of my recipes, anywhere, if you see vinegar, change it to lemon or lime. I don't teach people to take vinegar through their mouth. We only use it externally for fungus and stuff like that. Right, cirrhosis. Um, tumors, um, swollen lymph node, lumps popping up here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, that's when we use vinegar, bacteria, things that are outside, externally. And then you have your next best bit, the garnish, all right? And this, or, or you can call it accompaniment, right? This must be edible. So don't go outside and pick a palm leaf and put on your salad because it looks nice. No, <laughs> anything that you put on your salad, it must be edible. So don't go pick no poison ivy and put on it either. All right. And things that you can use, you can use some toasted chopped nuts. You can use seeds as well and you can toast them, but having them raw on it is also fine. You can use slivers of vegetables that you slice up thinly or julienne them. You can use finely chopped herbs. You can use sprig of herbs. You can use fried up beans. You have so many things that you can use. And we have a lesson to do in plating, plating presentation. And when we do that, you will learn even more things that you can use to decorate your plate, your salads itself, and, and overall your food, right? So now we're gonna go on to the next slide. What are the key qualities to an amazing, exciting salad? The green leaves must be clean. So listen, I went to a restaurant once and I broke my tooth because I bought a Caesar salad and I bit into it and I bit into a smop string, okay? When I investigated, this is what happened. The very same sink that they wash, they throw the mop water in, is the very same sink that they wash the salad in, okay? I've gone to other places and I've bit into salad and I'm getting crunch, crunch, crunch. And I'm thinking, oh, black pepper, but no, that was sand, that was dirt. Salad must be washed, it must be clean. So make sure your lettuce, you're pulling the leaves off and you're washing the inside of them properly, getting out all worms and stuff like that. Again, I went to another restaurant and I got a bug on my salad. And I'm telling you that put me off for years. I could not go back to that restaurant. I never went back to that restaurant, <laughs> right? Because every time I see their name, I see the bug. All right, freshness. So when you buy your salads, wash them, clean them nicely, um, put them in your fridge, store them properly to maintain the freshness, all right? Harmony, right? Your salad must harmonize, basically. The ingredients must complement each other. Um, and you use your food combination chart. They must combine, well, you know, don't, don't use salad things that everything is the same color, that it looks monotone because then it doesn't look appealing. Remember, this saying is not just a saying that we eat with our eyes, it's actually a reality. You will look at a food and you will think, even though you're hungry, you will think, I don't want that. Because guess what? It just doesn't look appealing, it doesn't look appetizing. And you will look at something and it probably don't even taste good and you will want it and you will eat it and guess what? It actually tastes good to you because it looked good. So it must look good, it must prevent monotony monotone um, and dullness. 
right? Avoid busy signals as well. Put together your flavors, let them be interesting and um, put together different textures as well, right? Don't make a salad and everything look like it has been mushed in a food processor. Um, make the salad appealing to the eyes. I think that covers harmony as well. They use bright colors, use seasonal fruits or vegetables because when they're seasonal, you get the, the color is brighter when it is in season, right? And it looks fresher as well and it actually tastes better when it is in season. You will notice when something is coming out of season, it's always full of worms. That's the first thing. <laughs> All right, and the color looks dull. It even tastes, doesn't taste as good, all right? Um, use a variety of fresh ingredients. Add a visible crunch, right? So your crunches can be from your seeds. It can be from your nuts. It can be from your grated coconut. It can be from uh, lots of other things. Even your onion flakes. It can be from your onion flakes. Um, you, your stuff that you can dry, dehydrate, that you can then use now um, to, make your, to make your crunch, right? Um, what else? Your drizzle your dressing. So when you make the salad, it's nice to just massage some of your dressing in it, even if you're going to serve dressing, um, drizzle over it afterwards. It's nice to get a little bit of flavor on the leaves and stuff like that. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want the leaves to become heavy and then start looking like you have just cooked them. You want them to look fresh and standing, right? But a little dressing will help to improve the flavor and a lemon, 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 or lime. Whenever I say lemon, it means lime as well, all right? You can't lose off it because putting it on your salad actually helps the gut to absorb help the stomach to absorb the nutrients faster and absorb more of the nutrients from the salad, right? So you, and it improves the flavor. It helps it to keep the freshness. Height, when you're making your salad, you wanna have height, you wanna have width. So you wanna have a nice big plate. You wanna start from the base and you come up in a little mountain, right? You wanna have a pattern, a pattern. It's good to have a pattern for your salad. So be intentional. Use a white plate or a plain plate, right? You can also use a mold to shape your salad that will look outstanding as well, especially things like your grain salads. Instead of just spooning on the grain to the plate, use a mold to shape it, to form it. And um, it will look just stepping it up a notch, all right? When you put that on the table for your family, they will think that, wow. You're just cut. You just bought this at a restaurant. That some executive chef just prepared that for you. All right, next slide. There we go. A salad with some height. Now we're looking at different structures of salads. Structure, structure. This is how you can arrange your salad. You have what is called a composed salad, right? Where the ingredients are carefully assembled from the ground up, with a certain structure in mind. Something like this, you could call a composed salad, but we're gonna look at something better that is a composed salad. All right, but well, this is just there to show you height, height, height. You see, it goes up, right? Then you have an arranged salad, which is artfully arranged and drizzled with your vinegar dressing, which for us, it's the lemonarette, which is a new word. But if you have a nicer word to, 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 to if you have a nicer word that you have created, Please do, let's put it in our dictionary. <laughs> All right. Um, it's so arrange, arrange, arrange salad um, is drizzled with vinegar rather than um, a toast. Yeah, it's drizzled rather than um, tossed. Okay, I think I'll give more explanation when I show you the picture. Then you have what is called a toss salad, which is the ingredients basically thrown together. This right here is a toss salad. That is in this demonstration. This is a toss salad. Mind you, it is sitting on a bed of lettuce, which you can't see the, some of it now, but you can see that little bit right here where my cursor is, right? So it's a toss salad. The ingredients are thrown together with the dressing. What dressing is on this? It's just lemon juice, olive oil, and salt. All right. And um, then, and uh, probably some herbs. So it's always nice to throw some herbs in your dressing. It takes it up a notch in terms of flavor. Then you have a bound salad or a compound salad, right? 
And this is like your potato salad or your tuna and mayo salad. That kind of salad that is held together by a thick cream. Like your, it's held together by like with your mayonnaise or your salad cream. That's what holds it together. So when you spoon it out, it will sit on the plate without, it shouldn't be falling all over the place. All right. It means your mayonnaise is not thick enough. All right, and then you have what we call a wedge salad. So like a tomato and mozzarella salad that you have the pieces wedged between each other. And we're gonna come back to these leaves. Let me just show you some of these salads. So this is what we call the green, green salad. As you can see, everything is literally just green. Um, it's the leaves and you can have a combination of leaves. Um, but this year we have, uh, what you call this now? This is actually a papaya, green papaya salad right here. So if the fruit is green, yes, you can use it to make a salad or you could cook it. Um, then this now is a composed salad. This right here that you're looking at is a composed salad, right? A plate or a platter with a variety of salad items or a bed of leaves. There is leaves here, even though I know from this angle of the picture, you can't see it, but there's leaves underneath, right? Um, the ingredients are carefully and conscientiously assembled from the ground up with a certain structure in mind. Um, it can be arranged in a pile or side by side in a plate or a bowl. It is not a tossed salad. As you can see, this is definitely not tossed together. All right. Um, then you have a bean salad. Here you go. The, the, this, this is just a popular bean salad, but you can put whatever beans you want combined together and you can make your dressing and you can use some lime because the lime is compatible with the bean. So you can use your lime, your olive oil and your herbs, right? Herbs that will enhance the flavor of your beans. When you make your dressing, you can put some bay leaf in it to soak. When you make your dressing, you can just put it in a bowl of warm water to start to extract, to steep it to extract the flavors from the herbs that you put in. So it will make that dressing a little bit more flavorful. And then you can then shake this up nicely and throw this in the fridge. So it just chills a little bit, but you can use a salad dressing. Room temperature is actually best. So you can make up your bean salad from your kidney beans. You can use your black beans. And normally when you cook the beans, you wanna drain them off and then you wanna give them a little rinse to get sometimes you know a little bit of slime on it you don't really want that for the salad somebody needs to mute their microphone um so you use your cook on your olive oil and stuff like that um sometimes people, not sugar you're not going to use any sugar at all on this course so i have sugar here but you you use your you can use a little honey um or a little agave, all right? We never use sugar. That crystallized stuff is poison to the system. All right. Or we can use molasses. We use molasses to make some salad dressings as well. And um, anything that you wanna capture like a balsamic vinegar type of dressing, we use the molasses. Um, there was something I wanted to say. Oh, let's go back here. And then you have a main course salad. The main course salad, as I said before, have some sort of protein or something with it. So that's why we have this year, this red slaw, red cabbage salad, red salad, have the tofu, plank of tofu um, pan fried um, there and um, just sliced up or you can use a slab. And then you have the arranged salad. This is arranged salad. So what we have on this plate here is, this is also called on your ebook, it is called a rainbow salad. That's what is in your ebook, the rainbow salad. You can use other vegetables. And oftentimes we use a, um, these kind of vegetables for this. And so we have here the carrot. The white one is broccoli. You can also use a cabbage, right? You can use red cabbage as well. So I'm just telling you different colors that you can add. You can use a beetroot as well. The green one here is the broccoli. Sorry, the white one is a cauliflower and the green one is a broccoli. But this particular one here, when I did the broccoli, I believe I, um, I put this through my food processor. I believe it has um, garlic already pulverized in with it, or it may be nuts that is pulverized with it, why it's not fully green. And you can do the same, or you can have a section where you have um, your, you can do some chickpeas, some mashed chickpeas that you put pulverized as well, and you can put some, 
salad dressing on that and have that as one row. You can use red cabbage. You can use your pumpkin or your butternut squash as one row. And um, you can use it raw as well as if you want. You can, you can um, put it in your oven and roast it a little bit first or blanch it first and then um, go ahead or marinate it. As I said, do it. You do this salad and you have it like tomorrow. So what you would do, you would do the individual colors by themselves, have them in their own individual bowls, marinating, and then you leave that overnight and then you arrange it on your platter or whatever you're gonna arrange it on for the next day, all right? So as I said, possible rolls, beetroot, carrot, broccoli, cauliflower, your red cabbage, um, even your black cabbage, you know, can also be used. Your pumpkin, or your butternut squash, your chocho, uh, or Christophine, it's also called, can also be used. Now, here we go. This is a wedge salad. And this picture is from one of our, this is from our, our youngest student that graduated. Uh, was he 11 years old or 10 years old? Ina, he did the salad. And that's a homemade cheese, homemade mozzarella cheese that we make on the course. Right, so he made this salad with it. This one is from Google. This one down here is from Google. All right, so this is what we call a wedge salad. And that's the homemade mozzarella cheese with the tomato and the basil leaf wedged together. So um, as you can see, it's a beef. Oh, my battery is running low. Can you, um, that charger just bring over for me, please, when you get a chance, thank you. And then you have the bone salad, which is, this is it. So you have a grain one here, which is from couscous, that is in the picture. And all of these three is from Google, all right? Um, but there's, there, there are others that I have posted in the group before that I have done. I just couldn't find any when I needed to put this PowerPoint together. Um, it's, I have two billion um, pictures on my phone, <laughs> right? So it's in my recipe book though that you can um, use and um, we'll teach you how to make the mayonnaise on the course here. So you have your potato salad, you have the pasta and you have the grain salad and this is grain with beans, which can make life easy. And, I, and we do on this course, we normally do the tabbouleh. We normally do the tabbouleh, which is an amazing salad. It's lovely, the students absolutely love it. So there you go, your bound salads are salads that are typically made from non-leafy vegetables, held together by a thick mayo type dressing, your potato salad, your pasta salad, your banana salad, your yam salad, your quinoa salad, your coleslaw, your tuna salad. A cub, a cub salad, there's no notes here for it. Um, this is an American salad that's, this is like chicken here uh, that is bounded together with mayonnaise. And then they have like some tomatoes and stuff down the bottom and then some green leafy vegetables, your avocado at the top and some lettuce on top. What I put this here for is I like the height of this salad. And this is a salad you can make for yourself. The height plus it's use a mold. A mold gives it that shape. So you see how nice a salad can look when you put it in the mold. Mind you, the mold is not as high as the salad itself, but the mold would stop right here where you have the chicken, right? So in the mold, you would put your base of tomatoes at the bottom, then you put some leaves and you can always put them different ways if you want, right? And then you would put your chicken, you could probably do some tofu and you could do up your tofu where you could even butter them and bake them. And then you make your own homemade mayonnaise and slather them in your homemade mayonnaise and then make that your next layer. And then you put some avocado on the top and some lettuce on the top, right? So it's a solid idea that you can give a veganize it. This is from Charlene, one of our teachers here. She does an immaculate job. This is so nicely cut. So that's a crude like platter. So this is another salad here. This, this you could have as a main course, right? This you could have as a main course because this here is made from chickpeas and it's a lot of peas and chickpeas is very filling. It's very nutritious. Then you have some pita bread are wraps that you could make and you could just cut them. And we did that yesterday at the class. And um, there is actually a lesson where we will be doing wraps again, right? Um, you could use a lesson for the pita bread, the very same mixture could be used to make the wraps. And you have your vegetables cut up in these sticks, stick format that you just dip in your, in this. 
Um, and it is often served, or you can serve this at your church functions and events and stuff like that. Everybody come and just take some raw vegetable and dip in that and enjoy it. All right. You can do it with more than one or two dips. Here is a very popular salad for other countries, right? Maybe you're not familiar with it, but the cactus, this one that I eat here, I eat it raw, by the way. So I use the young baby leaves. I don't, please don't go and pick those hard leaves. And then when you can't chew it, you ask me why yours didn't come out properly. You use the soft baby leaves. It's like okra. The softer, the young soft, soft ones are edible. Once it gets old, it will become barky and you won't be able to chew it, all right? It will become like a chew stick. So I use the young leaves and I use the back of my knives to knock the spiky bits off and I give it a good wash. And then I slice it up, right? And I mix it, as I said, as you can see, I have sun-dried tomatoes here, I have olives, I have sesame seeds, I have turmeric, I have salt, I have olive oil and I have lemon juice and it's mouth watering, it's finger licking good. Yeah. <laughs> KFC. <laughs> um, and then over here, it's a grilled cactus salad. So you can actually grill it. And then you mix it with, as you can see, avocado is in the salad. You've got all your leaves as the base of the salad. You've got loads of onion. This, is, this looks like more than one raw onion per day. You've got tomatoes. This picture, by the way, is taken from the internet. It's not mine. And you make your salad dressing. So you use lemon instead of olive oil, right? And this has mustard in it, but we're not, we don't use mustard because mustard makes the blood feverish. So we actually don't use mustard in this class. And um, what can we use instead of the mustard? I will tell you as soon as the Lord impresses me. All right. Okay, actually, yes, 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 yes. So I have a chef here with me, right? Um, and he just said, we can use the coconut custard cream. And what just came to my mind is you can, there is a lesson on here where you get to make a custard for homework, right? Um, and we're giving you the recipe, by the way, to make the custard for homework. So when you make that custard, you can actually put a spoonful of that custard in this dressing when you're making it. Fantastic. We're not doing dessert salads today. We're gonna do that at breakfast time. So now I needed to go back to the leaves, the slide, this. These are just some leaves that you can look for next time when you go to the supermarket. And this is, this is only a few right here. There is so much more leaves that can be eaten raw. And um, so you have your iceberg lettuce, you have your butter crunch, right? You have your, I, I, this is called miganet, but, and this one is red coral. but I call all of these Lola Rosso, but there's one called Lola Rosso as well, which is not even here. You have your watercress, you have your rocket. Here, what I'm using now, you have chicory, you have the radicho, you have your red cabbage. What I use a lot here, I use my basil, right? I use my callaloo leaf. I use a pop chow leaf. I use um, the purslane. You can pick a piece of purslane for me, please. I can show it on the, you know the purslane? All right, I'll show you the purslane after, when I'm doing the salads, I show you personally, all right? I'll pick a piece um, and show you what it is. And these, some of these, the, 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 what's the other one? The stinging nettle can be used as a salad as well, but I have never done it myself, but I know people who eat it as salad. They put it in a paper bag and shake, shake, shake it up to get the sting off and they use it to make salad. I am still scared of that. So that's why I haven't used it to make this salad. Kowich, yeah. In Jamaica, it is called Kowich. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. So that's it for my salad thing. And just to sum things up quickly for you, if you, if you feel a bit overwhelmed, a quick summary, uh, let me just share a flow chart with you, a salad flow chart. Where is it? All right. Is Joanna, Joanna, are you in house? 
Joanne, are you in house? All right, Joanne is supposed to be here to start with a salad, but it looks like I'm gonna have to start that with you. Just wanna see those who are in their kitchen. I'm trying to stop sharing this so I can share the salad flow chart with you. Where we 10 seconds. All right. Okay, solid flow chart. Let me make it big. All right, so on this flow chart here, just to sum things up, and this is a chart you could just have on your fridge door as well. That will just make life easy for you. You don't have to go through a whole PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> base, here are some bases. Green leafy vegetable. I know you can see different color leaves here. This is another base. So this base has a height. This base doesn't have too much height, right? but you put stuff on top of it. You can see the rocket leaf, you can see the spinach leaf, you can see your different color red lettuces. The body, here we go, a body that you can make and you can plop this on top of your base, right? And toss together or compose or arrange, here we go. One nicely composed over here, right? And as you can see, I've done the avocado in a special design, so it's like, my fan, my avocado fan, which sits on top, which gives me my good fat. Um, it's it covers for the satiation as well. And we're gonna teach you a dressing that will keep you really full. Um, your main salad also comes with some sort of protein. So this, you could have some tofu on this or in this or tempeh or chunks or beans. You could put some chickpeas in or black bean in the salad. Um, so there you go, your, your wedge salad, your arranged salad. It's just a flow chart just to show you. So you start with your leaf, you put your body next, and then you're dressing. And then after you're dressing your garnish, here are some garnishes. You don't have to go all this fancy, but we will teach you how to make some of these garnishes. Simple put, chop up some herbs for today. This I will now stop. Now I wanna see you in your kitchen. I'm removing the spotlight from myself. And I will now uh, put on gallery view and I want to see who is in their kitchen making salad today. Who is in their kitchen? Marcia, are you in your kitchen today? Katie, are you in your kitchen? Sharon, are you in your kitchen? Michelle, are you in your kitchen? Lely, are you in your kitchen? Where is Cynthia today? Cynthia, are you in your kitchen? Suzanne, are you in your kitchen? Judith McLean, are you in your kitchen? Anki, are you in your kitchen? Ladies sitting in front of me, are you in your kitchen today? <laughs> the badges, the link to submit oh, that? Um, information. Oh, Judith, you're um, echoing, I think. Something just happened. Then yes, I'm, I'm in a session and I, I'm send, in the wrong account uh, too. So I'll switch out your to submit the Okay. Back. All right. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. So, Judith, not in our kitchen at the moment. You'll be in it a little bit later. Oliver, are you? Oh, you're not in your kitchen, are you? So, who is in your kitchen? Who am I teaching today? I'm in the kitchen to be in a shower. Superb. Excellent. I'll pin you to the screen. All right, so ladies, you have to I'm have there. your phone or something. Log in and have your phone there in the kitchen so we can see your cutting board. And I'll be talking to you two from here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which phone you're going to log in on? All right. Um... Who is in, Anki, are you in your kitchen? Yep. Yep, all right, I'm there. wonderful. Just give me a minute, I'll be there. Okay, all right, I'm just gonna pin you as well. 
All right, Michelle, I can see Michelle, wonderful. All right, I can see somebody else connecting. Okay, Katie. I'm gonna I'm gonna log off so I can switch my account and get into my account. All right, all right. It is not going to be on today. Okay, give me a give me ten seconds of the back. All right, so let's see if the other device is getting in. I don't, I don't see it coming in as yet. Or maybe it has come in. Yeah, we can see, we're not seeing your cutting board. Olivia, you hold a phone for them? Uh, phone yeah, maybe you can drop one chair or something. So they can see. see. All right. Um, all right. So, what are, what solid? What have we got there for a solid? Okay, Joan is here. <laughs> all right. So Joan, we're just about entering in the kitchen. We only just finished all the lectures and presentations. She says she has internet trouble. Oh, she has internet trouble. Okay. Wow. Okay. You're on mute. She's here now. Okay, all right. Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoy the lecture with Sister Davina. I know she did fantastic. Yes. So, Joanne, I'm going to highlight you on the screen at this time. So, everyone, Joanne is going to do a salad. Joanne is going to do a salad. She's going to demonstrate one. So, you can follow. You can follow.
And then every Friday, every single Friday, we will do a salad to cover the different types of salads that we discuss on the course. So today, um, we're not seeing okay. your workstation, you know, Joanne. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing your workstation. Oh, you're not seeing it? Is it better? The M for mother. <laughs> Is it better? It's better. We're seeing the greens, yeah. Not sure if we're able to see the cutting because we're seeing the top part of the greens. And not not good. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Is it better? No, no, we see you. The salad board is completely gone. They're no good. I wish I could come over there and help you to fix that camera, Joan. I know. I'm not good at this. All right, just yes, yes. All right, that is okay. Leave it at that for now. It's okay like that? It's okay enough, yes. So I have some greens here and um, I like a green leafy vegetable salad. Could somebody, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so my name is Joanne Goodluck and I'm living in Canada. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I'm also a medical missionary. And um, I've been a vegan for over 32 years. And uh, today we will be doing just a green salad, just a leaf salad. And in, in our salad, when we are billing a salad, I showed Davina tell us that before, we bill our salad with something crunchy, something bitter, I love something bitter because the liver is always happy when we have something bitter, right? And uh, we love something green. We love something a little red. And we also love our onions. We can't do it without our onions, right? So the onions have lots of sulfur and it helps the body very well. So in my salad, I like to add herbs and I like to add different things to the salad, especially when it's a green salad. Because some people may say, I'm not a, I'm not a cow, right? So um, it's just a salad where you have um, just greens. So I have here, it's a mixed green I have. Um, this I picked up at the store. I like to see different colors. So this is a mixed green that's here. You have different leaves inside. For those of us who can't have mixed green, it's okay. I get that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> For those of us who cannot have mixed green and you can have spinach and you can have some kale, uh, whatever green leaf you can find in the store. When I, when I speak to someone about a salad or anything green, I tell them whatever you see in the, in the grocery store on the outside of the, the aisle, not the inside, outside of the aisle, just buy it. If you don't know the name of it, just buy it and go home and look at the picture on um, picture this and see what it tells you. Just buy it, eat it and enjoy it. Because greens is like having greens in the body. It's like a blood transfusion, right? So I love to have a mixed green in my salad. I don't know what green you have today. So this is my mixed green. And I have some mint. Like I said, I like to season my salad, my leaf salad. So I have some mint here. Um, you can put some basil. You can put some cilantro. I just love to season up my salad, my leaves. So I have some mint today. And I also have some parsley. 
right? And we know parsley is very good. It's, um, it's good for the adrenal glands, right? So when those adrenal glands are tired, we can also have some parsley in our salad. We can have parsley tea. Just make a, like you make mint tea, parsley tea. This works very well on the adrenals. It's also because the adrenals is sitting right over the kidneys. It also helps the kidneys as a diuretic, okay? So this is something that I love to put in my salad. And of course we have Redicio. Redicio is a bitter leaf. It's like, it's a lettuce. It's different leaf. It, it's full like a cabbage, right? And I sure you may have used this or you may have seen it in the store. So I have my Redicio, right? This is bitter. We have also I endive, which is a bit long and white. And I show maybe you probably know env endive. So this is our Redicio. Redicio is something I love to put in salad every time I make a leaf, a green salad, a leafy salad, because it works very well for the liver because of the bitterness inside. And of course, good old romaine. <laughs> good old romaine. So romaine lettuce is very much nutrition more than iceberg. I didn't bring an iceberg, but I know you know what's an iceberg. I never use ice balls unless I'm making um, hay stock. So you know hay stock, you have all different kind of green, just the same. But the, the, the ice ball give the lettuce a crunch. I say to some people, if you don't like water, just take some iceberg lettuce and, and eat it for the day because iceberg lettuce is basically just filled with water, right? So good old romaine, we have some romaine. So we build a salad like this and we cannot leave the salad without some onions. So I love to put red onions. Some people love to put Spanish onions. Spanish onion, I don't have one to show you, but it's the big yellow or big white onions, right? The ones that we cook with, it's not the ones that we eat, right? It's a bit strong. But this red onion, some people feel that they cannot eat a half of this or a quarter of this because it's very strong. What I do, I didn't have my mandolin with me today, but I have a little mandolin. You know what's a mandolin? It's sliced very thin. So when we use the mandolin to, 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 to grind or to grate our things like lettuce or coconut or anything like that. It come out very thin. So it give us a chance to um, enjoy our salad. I'll show you. Okay. When, you, when, we, when we use the mandolin, this is what we get like with the, with, it's very fine. I made the salad already. So this is how the mandolin makes the lettuce. Um, the onions. So it's very fine and it will give you the ability to eat more of the, the onions because onions are very good for us. It has lots of silica. It also helps us to sleep at night. If people have trouble falling asleep at night, they can have an onion in the evening with their salad, right? So, so the mandolin will help you to, it's just another kitchen gadget that I always say, have it because it's very important. It makes the cabbage look beautiful. It makes the onions look beautiful. It helps you to eat more because it's smaller. It grates it smaller. So it's better than a grater. So these are the things that we're going to build our salad with. So what do you have today? Do you have green leafy? I don't know what you have today. What does a mandolin look looks like? Can you show oh. I went, you know, Friday, I will have the mandolin to show you. Okay. Friday, we, I will bring the mandolin and I'll show you what it looks like. So um, it will help you to grate, let's say you want to grate carrots in, in a nice shape or you want to do your cabbage that it doesn't, you know, chop with a knife. Um, if, if you want to do coconut, I love to put coconut in my salad. So I will buy a, a, a dry coconut and I will use the mandolin to, to, to slice it. So when I slice with the mandolin, I'm gonna show you my little piece of coconut, just a second. 
See, I build a salad here. This is a big plate, right? This is a big plate. And in my salad here, I'm going to show you. This is when you use a mandolin. This is what you get as the coconut. This is the pieces of coconut that I use the mandolin to, wow. to, to grind. Okay? So the, the, the mandolin makes the coconut very, um, very thin. It makes the onion thin, everything like that thin. So this is my plate of salad that I made. And it has the endives inside. It has the coconut on top. I put some red pepper and some yellow pepper just for color. And I also have some sprouts inside, some um, alfalfa sprout inside. I have the red onions and I have my mixed green at the bottom. Hi, Joanne, is this the mandolin? That's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. That's your that's your mandolin. You um you should right. You have the piece to hold um to when you cut your your thing. You just hold it there because the blade is very sharp. Okay. 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 So you you should be able to have different slices or different gears. One might be higher than the other one. So you can change it to see which one of the gears do you want to have. Do you want to have a thicker slice or you want to have a thinner slice? I love to use the thinner slice because it gives me a chance to um, eat more of my salads. Just want to add to what Joanna is saying. You don't have a mandolin. I throw everything in my food processor and get okay. different. Yeah, you just stop it. If you don't want it to go any finer, you just stop it. And I, you can use your box grater as well for certain things. Yes. Um, and I have this one here. Let me show you this one. Oh, this, this thing doesn't video. Oh, uh, what, what are you in us? If you look at EGW, you will see, um, careful, you know, your finger, it's very sharp. You see EGW? Can you see EGW on your screen? You can see that, that orange thing there that's being used. Yeah. Yeah, that's also very good. So we just want to show you what we have here. Can I can you use your phone and just we just want to show what we have cut up here. So we have the things already. That's the lettuce there. It's not cut up in any form, just it's washed and clean. Here we've got a red cabbage, and that we put to the food processor. All right, that's your red cabbage. That's some tomato finely diced. That's um, what's that? A pumpkin. Right, so that's a pumpkin as well through the front food, food processor. And this is a chocho or the Christophine. It's threaded. Yeah. And then this is the Jamaican Aki. You know the Jamaican Aki, right? This is the fresh one, not the one from the tin. Um, and it is finely chopped up. It's not cooked, it's raw. So it's cleaned up and it's chopped up, right? That's going to go into our salad over this side as well. And we've got a pepper here that was forgotten. And <laughs> that's the onion being done, the red onion being done and the white onion. And here I'm adding a yellow pepper and a red pepper that will be added to the collection. And then we're going to make for you a salad dressing with this. We're going to make another dressing. We're going to make two dressings. So I that's also show you what we have around here. Leave you with Joanna. And pardon me? No, I said go back to Joanna. Okay. So as we as we mingle and match today, um, one of the things when you build in a salad, I, I think Sister Davina probably shared that with you. Like I said before, you you should you want a salad that will have you alive. You want to have a salad that will, um, you know, something you want to stay with because. Salad is basically the main meal of, of the lunch meal, right? Some people may have chose um, the, the, the breakfast meal as a salad sometimes, you know, instead of having fruits and porridge or fruits and granola or yogurt and granola. However, it may be they may have the, 
the salad for breakfast and switch it over and have in the evening. But um, while you're building a salad, you always aim for raw. And Sister Davina may have told you that I do. Yeah, we've know. done all of that. Okay. We've done all of that. Yeah, we've done all of that already. Now we just want to eat the salad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to build a salad. What do you have? Yes. Eat? You have you have raw vegetables. You have something from the cabbage family. You have something from the 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 the, the leaf family. What do you have today? Yeah, we have. As you see, we have our lettuce and we have um, cabbage. Oh, okay. And we also so, have parsley. All right. Which so for our lettuce, we're lettuce. going to we're going to wash our lettuce, and also when we're washing our lettuce, we make sure we soak it well and we we wash it well, leaf by leaf. Right. We want to make sure that it's clean and there is nothing left on there, and sometimes. Our lettuce is a bit slimy. We want to get that off. We can use some lemon and a little salt and rinse it in some cold water. And we're going to break our lettuce leaf in bite-sized pieces, of course. Bite-sized pieces, not too big. That's when you put it in your mouth, it's, it's spreading all here. You just want to make it in small pieces, bite-sized pieces, that when you put it in, it will go right into the mouth, okay? We don't want it to be sticking out here and sticking up here, right into the mouth, right? And when we make our lettuce, we put in always, when we're making a nice plate of salad, of course, we will put the lettuce at the bottom, right? We will put our lettuce at the bottom. Can I add something to that, Joanne? Yeah. Okay. So it's in terms of, should I cut my lettuce or should I break my lettuce? Which one is best? I would like to, I like to break my lettuce because when I use a knife to cut the lettuce, let's say I didn't want to use all of it today. Or let's say I didn't finish my salad for tomorrow. I, I find it tends to get brown. It tends to look differently. So I like to break it. When it breaks, when it's break, it is better. You could leave it for the next day. There is no brown edges or things like that. So I like to break. Okay. So thank you for that answer. And I just want to let you know there's two schools out there of thought. So mm -hmm. she's right. Once you break it, it will last longer. But coming from an aesthetic perspective, a chef will tell you, listen, people will get fired from the workplace if they break the lettuce in a restaurant. <laughs> we slice the lettuce because it looks better in terms of presentation. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing I'm going to say now from a, um, a health perspective is you cut vegetables today, eat them today. So yes. cut them. They will look nicer. You don't need them to last longer than today. <laughs> so you shouldn't be worried about the brown but definitely if you have it left over and you cut it will turn brown very fast but if you yeah. break it it will um it will survive it will live but it looks better when it is sliced and and, and sister Davina, when it's sliced it should have a sharp edge knife to really slice yeah. it nicely also. oh yes and it doesn't yes drag. i hear I, need to present I, hear it the chef the I hear the chef saying yes to that. <laughs> yeah, sharp knife, a proper sharp knife for your kitchen. So don't use a knife that is going to chamba chamba the vegetables, but have a lovely sharp knife that can make precise cuts. Right. right. So we're going to build our salad. If you're ready to build your salad, I make a plate already, but always... Um, we put our we put our our greens at, we put our greens at the bottom of course in the middle of the plate right and i fold my plate because i'm going to eat that later but if you presenting it to someone you you fold your plate you don't fold the plate like i have done and then you build your salad you begin to put your different colors you you put your parsley you began to build your salad really nice 
and you can make it very nice by putting it around or you can stack it in the middle of the plate. And make sure it's in the middle and not dragging to the end, okay? So you know we're gonna be demonstrating from here. We're gonna be doing as well from here. So if somebody wants to they work for both of us, we're gonna be compiling hours together as well. I didn't hear you, Sister Lavina. Oh, I was saying, I'm going to be compiling. As you speak, I will be putting mine together as well. So if somebody, they'll be able to see both. We're both pinned to the screen. Yeah. I'm following your instructions. <laughs> So when I said we break our salad, I usually, you know, the, the romaine lettuce have a nice piece that is at the bottom that is very crunch. Some people may throw this away because it's too big, it's too thick. Um, so when you break in the salad, I usually break it in the middle of that thickness. You know, that middle, when you break it, you have a thickness like a butterfly. So I usually squeeze it in the middle like that, okay? And then you just break it a little bit more. So you have your bite-sized piece to go into your salad bowl. So if it's too long like that, you just break it like that. And you just stop, you just keep billing. So here I have my mixed green. I have my radicchio. And I have some of my romaine with some parsley already. Hello, I cannot yeah? see anything on the screen. Oh, you didn't see The screen anything? is black. Oh. Yes, the screen is black. No, you need to press speaker. Check your no, system. No, it's fine. It's fine here. Okay. You need to press speaker's view on your device. Okay. Thank you. We are back now. Okay. If if you don't have, if you're in a place that you don't have romaine, because sometimes if you in a winter place, you don't always have romaine, but sometimes you can have spinach. You can just substitute, you know, your romaine with some spinach. You can substitute um, your mixed green with some spinach. You can substitute with some kale. Um, you know, anything that's green that you see you can make a nice plate with, you can do that. Sorry, I'm fixing it back. I'm fixing it back. Hello, Davina. Hello, sorry, I've, I, I, I messed the screen. I'm trying to fix it up. Yes, I want to ask something. Okay, go ahead. Um, in the shopping list, there are about four salads. We were told to choose one of them. So what I want to know is, uh, are we following what's being done or we choose a salad of our choice from the shopping list? Okay. Did did you choose one that you have the ingredients ready for? Did everybody choose one that they have the ingredients ready for? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's hear what did you choose? Which, which one did you choose? I chose the chicken and Caesar salad. Okay, you chose a chicken Caesar salad. All right, so yeah, yes. that one has to be done differently. Which, which, who else chose something different from what is being done? Um, I chose the avocado. That's just a dressing. Everybody needs to do the dressing. 
But you didn't choose a I salad. Will, I, 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 will, I will also do salad option one. Yeah. What yeah. about the rainbow salad? Yes. Yes, we're going to do that. What okay. else? So which one are we doing now? We're doing a mixed salad now, like the ultimate mixed salad. Okay, thank you. Yes. Have we got our ingredients okay, for no, this one? Fine. Have we got yes. ingredients yes. for this one? Okay, yeah. all right, go ahead. Then. Yes. I am trying to find back Joanne. Oh. Joanne, is that you? Yes. You're upside down. You're sideways. It's sideways. You need to turn the camera. Okay. All right, it's straight now, but the scene. All right, we can see your vegetables and stuff now, yes. Oh, we're not hearing you though, you're on mute. It, it's not going well today. <laughs> All right, go ahead. We can hear and see you now. Okay, so how is everyone going with their salads? So not everyone will be doing this salad, but some people will be doing this salad that you're doing now. Okay, of, so, yeah. so everyone is still um, going well with their salads. So you have more yeah, I don't have them to about cut. that I don't have to have? have you got more to tell them about that salad or or that's it I think it's okay I'm just billing it I'm just uh making some julian um peppers I'm putting some some yellow pepper and some red pepper on the salad Okay. Can I use baby marrow instead of cucumber? Can you use a what? Baby marrow. That's the small cucumbers. That, that's the mini cucumbers. Yes, you can use them. Definitely. Okay. Joanne, we could just put our salads through like a solid dryer so that it's not wet or just to dry the leaves off. Or what that... did you say? I didn't hear you. Yes, to get the leaves dry or do you yes. get them wet? What... If you, do you have a salad dryer? Yes. Okay, so you can dry your leaves, yes. Hello. Yes. What can I do with my ultimate salad if I want to eat it uh, after eight hours? After eight hours? You can eat it. Yes. See, is it, is it no, nice? No, what I mean is should... Is it nice for it's you? It's nice for me now. Okay. So yes, you, so you, I was thinking... 
You have some paper towel? Paper towel? Yes. Or if you have- No, I don't have paper have, towel. If you have, do you just damp, you just wet a, a, a clean towel? And you just- yes. get, You just wet a clean towel and you, um, you just put it over and keep it in the fridge. Okay. So you, so you I, damp I do, wait, with, with the seasoning, with the seasoning. Um, you, 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 you want to season the salad now. You wouldn't put your dressing until later, tomorrow when you're ready to eat it, right? Okay. So if you put all your all your lettuce, all your salad together, don't put the dressing. Just put it like that, and you, if you're eating it tomorrow, just wet a towel and just cover it in the fridge and leave it till tomorrow. Oh, all right, thank you. So it can stay fresh. Yes, thank you. I, I'll use that method. So I have built my little salad here. This is my little salad that I have built. Anything that go on the top? I put a little bit of cranberry on the top. And because it's leaf, I put some cranberry. And um, I have my red onions. I have some mint, my romaine lettuce some yellow, yellow and red peppers. And I also have my parsley at the bottom, my romaine and my mixed greens. And here I have my little dressing. So you've just made like for an individual, one bowl for an individual. I, I didn't hear you. That's like a bowl for an individual, for one person. The parsley, I didn't hear you, Sister Davina. So that portion is like for one person, what you have there. Right, right. In my, oh. in my salad dressing, I make an oil dressing. So this oil dressing is consists of garlic, lemon juice, and olive oil. Okay, all right, lovely. Um, anyone doing the ultimate mix salad? Which one is that, Davina? Describe yeah, that's it. That's on the on the book. It says ultimate mix salad. I I don't I don't have the book. Ah, uh, the shopping list. It says on the shopping I'm list. Who the has the shopping list? Anyone have the shopping list? Yep, I have it. Yeah, what does it say? Does it tell you about the ultimate mix salad? Yeah, it's salad number three. Right, and what does it say for it? Um, do you want the dressing or do you want the ingredients for the salad? Every, every, everything, please. Okay, just tell us for, what the, it says. for the dressing, it says one avocado, <coughs> sunflower seeds, onion, spring onion, garlic, olive oil, salt, lime or lemon, plant, milk or water. And then the, uh, for the salad is romaine lettuce or loroso, rocket or watercress, two types of tomatoes, yellow, black, red, green, cucumber, look for baby cucumber, red onion, peppers, red and yellow, raw corn and olive. Okay, right. So any, was there anyone who was going to do that salad? I'm going to be doing that because I have the stuff. Okay, or if you, if you have any mixed leaf, normal vegetables that you would make a salad with, we can use it, we can make that. It doesn't have to be those exact leaves, right? But we make it up from leaves that we have. 
Right. And what, what Joanna just showed is, is, is very similar to what it is. So if anybody wants to do that, you can just go ahead and do that. All right, you want to see now how to make the, the other salads, the rainbow salad. Yes, and Who has the, the chicken and Caesar. The chicken Caesar. Okay, so we're going to do the, the chicken Caesar is very easy. You've got your lettuce cut up. Let me, let me take you off now. Joanna, thank you very much for that salad. I'm going to remove you from the screen so they can see um, what else is happening over here. Thank you so much. Thank you. How many persons doing a chicken Caesar salad today? Only one? I am. I am. Okay. Who's I am? Is that Grace? <laughs> Who's in? Who? Onky. It's Onky. Onky. Okay. Onky doing the chicken Caesar. All right. Muluti. And Muluti. I can't find myself. Sorry, I'm trying to find myself on the screen. Oh boy, look at that. Found myself. <laughs> Can, is everyone seeing me? No? If you're not seeing me, um, spotlight me on your screen. I can't see you. Click again. Yes, I can see you now. All right, you're seeing me now. You're seeing my workstation. I hope you're seeing all of it. So now, yes. for your chicken Caesar salad, you've got your tofu marinated. You've got your tofu marinated. It's not marinated. But you have it. Oh, you marinate it. But I have it. How do you marinate it? All right, here we go. That's your tofu. Oh, tell me who and who doing it. I just want to know who and who doing it. I don't okay, know what I'm, else. I don't okay, know what I'm doing it. yet. So I'm looking for options. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I just have a bunch of salads. So I'm just looking to see. <laughs> All right. So I'm just doing it. So if you want to do it now, you're going to follow, or you can just write down and do it afterwards, or which one you want to do. So here's your tofu, right? Your block of tofu. You're gonna make um, plants. Yes. Yep. Oh, this one. Uh, okay. You're gonna make your plant how of big, tofu. How big? So out of that. How block, big are the slices? One, two, three, four, five. I get six slices. I just get six plants out of my tofu, out of my little block. So notice my okay. hand. That's my finger. You see that? It's uh, almost like the width of my finger. My finger yes. is a bit twisted on it. Right. So that's one of my plants. Right. So some yeah. slabs of Yeah, tofu. mine. I've just cut mine. Where? Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Yeah, I've just spice. cut black mine. I'm going to put some black and Cajun spice, some grounded pimento. Yeah, oh, black and Cajun spice. <laughs> All right, so if you're going to have a blocking cage, no, one of them is going to sit there. And the salt, and put on fire under the pot. Bring the salt. Sit there. All right, so we're going to season the tofu, and we're going to leave it a bit, and then we're going to just get the salad leaves. So, on to my seasoning, I'm putting some black and Cajun spice, right? But if you have. Did it, was this on your shopping list? Yes, it was. All right, so good. I'm just shaking some on. And obviously I've got some pieces rolling out here. So I'm just crushing them. All right, I'm throwing a little bit of Italian mixed herb. I'm gonna sprinkle some salt. <laughs> Okay. 
Right, and uh, oh, and I've got I've got some grounded pimento, which I it's probably not there, but I like to use this, and I like to use cumin. Oh, smells amazing. All right, and what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna drizzle. You can drizzle some um, sesame seed oil or whatever oil you want to use. I'm just using a little coconut oil just to get that moving. That's all. That's the only thing I'm putting it there for. Right, and I'm going to rub this on. So and that was Kajun spice, then what? <laughs> <laughs> so that was Cajun spice, Italian herb, grounded pimento, okay. and salt. Right? Okay. Yeah. And I'm just getting this on both sides. All right. And I'm going to rest this somewhere. I'm saving this piece. Just so let me see. I don't need a ball to just put this in to save it somewhere. Maybe. Fire underneath. Yeah. Some more. All right, so I'm just gonna rest this in a plate so I can just carry on marinating. All right, so just let me spread everything up. I'm gonna take my cutting board off again. So this is a chicken Caesar. All right, so we have chicken Caesar now. I'm gonna get a nice salad plate. Oh no. So this here, I'm gonna put it next to my head and you see the size. Are you? Okay. Yeah, so it's a I big can plate. see it. Yeah, it's a big okay. pasta plate, right? But it makes a nice presentation okay. for your salad. All right, good. I'm just resting it up here. I hope you can see that. I'm resting it up there. What I have here now, I have not got cost lettuce, right? We don't have that in Jamaica. But I've got, what have we got? <laughs> Alima, what is this lettuce called? The Jamaican lettuce. I don't know what it is called, all right? But it's different. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna just roll it. I'm not rolling it tightly, just loosely, all right? And I'm gonna cut. This is about an inch and an inch and a half thick, right? I've got more lettuce in the fridge. Okay. Right, and it's already washed. So this is what I have here now. And I'm gonna put that in my plate. Okay, all right, so let me give that one. So here, here goes. My lettuce on my plate, you're seeing that, right? I, I'll get a picture at each stage. What's the other phone? Oh, you can put, so the, the, the I'm gonna have to, to um hold on i'm gonna see if i can get my phone to show oh can see from your phone i want to do the other phone we're gonna pan fry the the we're gonna pan fry the tofu now okay. okay okay right if you take a picture of this so can we show i want you there's one thing i want you to take note of let me let me take a picture I'm gonna send you this picture and you tell me, and I want everybody else just to tell me what they have noticed with this picture, right? Because there is one key point I don't want you to miss with this. It's probably too full.
I'm sending this in the group, in the cooking class group. There is height. That's what I want you to see. There is height and the plate has a nice big rim. And we want to keep that plate clean, All right? All right, so I'm gonna make a dressing as well. But now we're gonna pan fry this tofu. We're gonna add some oil to the pan. Where's one phone that can see? Can see from this? No, can't see from this. Can see from this one? Yeah, all right, if you come over. And I'm using coconut oil. Okay. So here we go. I think this. I'm putting my plants in. And really, like this, you need only two per person. Now, if somebody eats a lot, you could give them three pieces. I'm putting all of that in. This is, um, you could use less oil, all right? Can't see it, Davina. You can't see? No. Um, oh. Okay, look for EGWM. Let me spotlight EGWM. No, you yeah. spotlighted. We just couldn't see that activity that you did. But you are oh, oh, look on the EGWM phone that is logged in as EGWM. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm gonna pin. Yes, you're seeing it now on your screen. You're still seeing me. I don't know why this thing. Please use your phone setting to spotlight EGWM because I can see EGWM from my computer. It's on my screen. Yes, I can see Davina. You can see, okay. Um, that's the tofu? That's the tofu being done. So now you have, what do you have on your screen now? It should be two people, myself and EGWM. Do you have that on your screen? Yeah, we can see it, but it's separate, yeah. Oh, there should be pins side by side. Okay. All right. So, Maybe, by the way, you could bread your tofu. You could flour it or you could bread it, right? Uh, you would get a dryer fry. You could squeeze all the water out before. There's a number of ways that you could do to get a better text of finished product, all right? And one of them is you could freeze it. So if you have a tofu, you could freeze it. And then you take it out of the freezer. When it's defrosted, you squeeze, you press it between two cutting boards. Squeeze the water out, then you put it back again in the freezer. Freeze it, take it out, squeeze it again to two cutting boards. And then when you flour it or bread it and fry it, the, the texture looks like chicken. I'm gonna make a dressing in the meantime. So what I'm doing over here, well, you could probably bring the camera over this side, but let me. So the tofu, I'm taking the tofu. With off that one now. block, can I ask? 
So before you ask, I have one lime here. Excuse me. Please. On my leaves, I'm just going to squeeze that lime on okay. my leaves. Right? I'm not even, I mean, it's half a lime I have. And I squeeze only just a little bit of it onto the leaves. And that's because, yes. remember, I said that the lime juice will help the body to absorb, right, the nutrients from the thing better. Now I'm going to make a dressing. Um... Have I got any soya milk? Any milk? Just the almond milk. Yeah? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna make a dressing and I've just grabbed my nearest bag of almond milk, box of almond milk, right? So if I use a half a cup, measuring cup. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is too yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Any measuring cup, half a cup. So I'm gonna use about half cup of milk. You can use any plant-based milk you have, yeah. right? Something mash. And so I have half cup of milk here. I'm gonna put some onion. I'm gonna put some onion in. I've got my onion already grated, right? So I'm just putting a little bit. Oh, let me use a measuring spoon. Listen to them there. Oh. I was going to ask about the onions. Right, so it's shredded. The recipe but it's about, says three onions. Yes, yeah, so this is it. It's shredded, but I'm adding about one tablespoon of shredded onion to the half cup. Right. Have How many teaspoons? One spoon. One tablespoon. It just, just, you can use half an onion. Or less. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one um can I get one more? <laughs> <laughs> so I have two pieces of spring onion here. That's on their last leg. All right. So this is what they have as spring onion. And I'm just going to give them some chop. And I'm putting them two in the food processor. All right, I have here just the last piece of tofu left from the block, which is not much, it's just a small piece. I'm going to add it to it, but afterwards. What I'm going to add to this is the rest of the lime juice. Right, so remember, I put a little bit on my salad, and I'm gonna I'm adding some right here now to my um to my milk, and I'm gonna add what I have here. I've got pumpkin. What have I got here? In here, you can add to your some sunflower seed or some pumpkin seed. You just want about a handful, all right? I've got mine toasted already. Hello. Davina. Yeah? Uh, can you please go over the ingredients again for the sauce dressing? Um, that's what I'm still doing. So I have I think half, I a cup, half a cup of milk. I have half a lime juice. I have half an onion. I have some scallion. Our spring onion, and I'm putting one tablespoon of grounded, grounded pumpkin and sunflower seed, and you can have some or if you have cashew nuts, you can use you can use it. You can use it whole one, or if you have it grounded, you can use it. Oil. I'm gonna use. Okay, so those are nuts. Huh? The, the last thing you put in was a powder of nuts. 
Yeah, that's the nuts. You can put in um, a handful of nuts if you have the nuts. Or if you have it grounded, that was just a uh, one tablespoon. Um, we have a quarter cup. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of coconut oil in this. But normally I would use olive oil, but right now for the speed of things, I'm just using the oil that I have opened. So I'm adding two tablespoons. I've added two tablespoons. My nuts, my seeds that's grounded already have salt, so I don't need to put any salt in it. And now I'm gonna cover this. Now I'm gonna blend. Oh, you could put some sesame seeds. That would go nicely in this, in this dressing, some sesame seeds. Should they be roasted or just raw? <coughs> I have, well, you can toast them if you want, but I have my raw, so I'm just going to add some to it now. And I'm putting one tablespoon of sesame seed. So I'm gonna blend it. Should they be soaked? Huh? Cashews, should I should they be soft salt cashew nuts? No, that's fine. And I'm blending. Yeah, I'm blending it. I'm ble I've blended that a bit. Now I'm going to add the tofu and I'm just breaking it up to add it. I may add a little bit more oil, but I want to see the texture that I get when actually I'm going to add a little bit more. Do you have to put the tofu? No, you can. If you have some, if you have some chickpeas, you can use some, um, you can just put a handful of chickpeas. If you have, you can use the soap cashew and you'll get the same result. You don't have to put the tofu. The sunflower seed, you can put more of the seeds and you'll get the same result. Oh, some liquid amino. If you have liquid amino or soy sauce, you can put about a spoon in it. So I'm just putting a dash in mine. So here we're going to taste. Who want to taste? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Tell them for the camera. <laughs> the class here. <laughs> you just saw her. Come back and tell them. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, all right. You want to chase Oliver? But I need to see that. So you need to, you need to put your thumbs up in front of the camera. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Do you want this? You don't have to. No, no, no. You have to come to us with thumbs up. <laughs> come here. Not only that, come here. Let them see your face. Yeah, really. All right, see there. No, they're not. Yes, all right. So there you go. So that's interesting. But what else you can add to it? I'm going to add some of the Italian herbs. Where yeah, is it? It's on the table. Oh, yes. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Italian herb. And I'm not measuring, I'm just throwing some in. Quarter teaspoon. Or, or something about like that. Yeah. You want a little bit more oil or you think it's all right? I'll go. All right. Uh, tofu, ready? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, a little tofu. Uh-oh. It's not that. Oh. Um, it, it's lopsided, okay. 
No, man, tofu in it already. One, may only have one piece. And um, if you look, this is a yeast plate. Pass it to me, please. Now, optional, and this step is optional. You can add some yeast plates to your dressing or to your salad. All right. Hmm? So I've got this ready. The dressing. Let me taste it. I didn't taste it as yet. Oh, amazing grace, how wow. sweet thou wow. art. Wow. <laughs> this tastes really good, all right? It don't need any yeast flakes, but I'm just telling you, just for your own benefit, I have the yeast flakes here. It box, the bag is upside it down, but I can't turn it up because I've already opened it. But it's is yeast flakes. And I would just add a little bit, a pinch like that. I would add to it if I wanted to use it. It's not necessary because that thing tastes outstanding. And I don't eat these flakes. <laughs> so I really don't want to put it on the salad because I actually want some of this salad. <laughs> All right. If I really could give this to my neighbor, that would be nice. <laughs> But tie this back up for me, please. Thanks. All right, so now I'm gonna just drizzle a little of it over. And it's a big, heavy drizzle, that is. Yeah, you should use a spoon. Yes, should have used a spoon. So don't do that. Do as use a spoon, all right? But I just wanna mix it in a little bit. And I'm trying not to mess the plate up. So something like this, if you wanted to take it back off and put it in a separate bowl to mix it, you could do, so you don't dirty up your plate. The last thing you want is a salad in a dirty plate, even if it is a salad that dirty it up. All right, so I'm gonna use one tablespoon here now. And still just drizzle a little bit over. Okay, the, the beauty is not there so much again, but it's not look too bad still. Oh. Um, let's put a couple of leaves without any dressing on it. And I'm very strategic as you can see. Right, and now the chicken. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So now we're going to be strategic with how we place these. One there, one here. That's right, Chef. Three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, apparently you don't put even number on the plates. You always put something extra. So. It sort of looks nicer. Cheap. Now what I've got here is this tofu is too heavy. Yeah. So no, I'm going to put them, but what I'm going to do, because these slabs are so heavy. Can I, can I, yeah, right. right, so I'm going to get three, three, strips yeah, three strips out of it. Excellent. All right. So here we go. I'll, I'll bring it up back a little bit. This side. To the side? Yeah. Yes, sir? Yeah. Oops. Right you want honey? All right. So I have a chef here instructing me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a hotel chef here instructing me, all right? So now he's gonna fix that so you can see how to make it look nice. <laughs> oh, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. And Simi has some parmesan cheese here. No, the parmesan cheese. <laughs> Oh, make the notes, not the parmesan cheese. All right, so there we go. One way of presenting it. And you could just find other ways of getting your chicken on the top of it. All right. Just find other okay, creative ways. It. You could dice it up as well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dice it. Actually, with chicken Caesar, it's always dice. Yeah, but not triangle shape. So let me show you. With chicken Caesar, oftentimes it is like this. Always dice. Now, if you can't, you cut tofu. <laughs> So oftentimes with chicken Caesar, you will see it like this, and then it's just it's in and throughout the salad. All right. So I'm gonna just shift these a bit and try this one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna strategically make some go under, make some in. And then now the rest, I'm just gonna get them on top. All right, so I think too much in it. Yeah. Don't you don't want your plate to look overcrowded, all right? And we're starting to clean my plate up. You don't want to overcrowd the lettuce cleaner. Right. Then just give it a clean again. And the dressing down. The, the, oh, yes. I'm going to sprinkle a little parmesan, vegan parmesan, and that's my nuts, that's my seeds that's toasted first, right? So I've toasted my seeds, pumpkin seed, sunflower seed, there was some cashew nut in this as well, toasted, almond nuts toasted, blended together with some mixed herb, right? And salt, ground it together. So that's what is in this bottle. And you can add yeast flakes to it, but I don't use yeast flakes, so I don't put any in mine. And I'm sprinkling a little bit over it. Because um, why is Parmesan cheese salad always, always, always have Parmesan cheese? All right, I think that is enough because, so when you leave this dressing, the longer you leave it to set, because it has the nuts in it, the longer you leave it to set, the thicker it is also gonna get. All right, so that's the Caesar dressing down. I'm gonna take a couple of pictures and send in the group. Right. So you're looking for height, you're looking to have that plate framed, and this plate, the rim has framed it. What else you could use to frame your plate? 
if you have something like some tortilla chips or when Myrtle teach you the onion crackers, you could just put them on the on the outside. You wouldn't necessarily do it for chicken Caesar because they don't really see it served like that. But when you do a salad, you could do it that way. All right. Um, All right, chicken Caesar. Uh, that, that doesn't look like it is spelled properly, but anyway, I hope you recognize that that is what it is. I'm moving this one out of the way now. We can just move this on the table. And we're gonna do another one quickly. So everybody is supposed to do the, supposed to do the, I need space. The other salad, right? The, <laughs> Everybody's supposed to do the rainbow salad, right? Am I online alone now? Or are you still here with me? We're still Am here. You're here still. Okay. Okay. All right. So the rainbow salad now. I'm just trying to clear up. All right. So for the rainbow salad, I'm going to use a nice platter. Let me show you. And this is a platter against my chest. You see how wide that is? All right, so big, big platter. And this, this is a salad you serve at events. All right, colors that you can use. I don't know who's, everybody's doing the rainbow salad, right? So everybody should be in their kitchen now. Right, all right. So here I've got pumpkin already um, pulverized. I put this through my food processor, but you could use your grater, right? To just to grate it. So there you go. I've got that. I'm going to season my pumpkin. I'm going to taste my pumpkin firstly, as it is raw as it is, to see what sort of flavor it has. Very nice. So like, you should, should see my household looking at me as in. <laughs> but it's good. It's a little bit on the sweeter, sweeter side. So what I'm going to add, if, if you have butternut squash, butternut squash is more creamy than sweet. So to this, I'm going to add lime. So I have the one half a lime here. I'm just going to add that. Can I get the honey, please? Yeah. So I'm adding that half a lime. I'm going to add a I'll tell you what this is. What measure is this? One teaspoon. Oops. A little bit more than one teaspoon. <laughs> Get it back in the bottle. All right. And let's get a spoon. And I'm going to balance that sweetness with a pinch of salt. I'm also going to add to that a little bit of white onion. So as you can see, I'm just, how many onions we have on this? Just one. one. We have one onion grated and that's what I'm gonna be using to garnish, to put, to mix in with just about everything. 
So you could make the salad dressing up first in a bottle and shake it nicely together. But I am just throwing it on the item and mixing it in, massaging it in. Smells amazing. This you can add some mixed herb to the pumpkin. Sit down. All right. So I'm leaving that there for a moment. Just let that marinate. Over here, I've got some tomatoes sliced up. And one of the things that goes best with tomatoes is basil. So I'm gonna, you're gonna use the colors, whatever colors you have, right? We just want different colors and we're literally just gonna arrange them. But the, the, the ones that you would normally want for this is things like your beetroot, your carrot, pumpkin or butternut squash, your sweet potato, your cabbages, white cabbage or red cabbage, um, things like your chocho will go very nicely with this as well, right? I don't have all of these, so I'm just using what I have. And I'm gonna put some basil. I've got some basil leaf and some parsley in this bowl here, which I'm just trying to find them, right? And I have basil because I grow it outside. And you roll them up like a cigar and then slice them and you get this. And I'm adding that to my tomatoes. And the dressing I'm gonna use with my tomato is, I'm adding a bit more, that's just really sparse. Can I get one clove of garlic, please? Right. I'm, again, I'm adding a little bit of onion to that, and I'm gonna add a garlic when I get it. And to my tomato, I want to add olive oil. Just hope I don't throw too much. Okay, all right, there we go. So that's olive oil. Again, I'm gonna put some salt. Yeah, I put like two pinches of pink Himalayan. I'm gonna add a pinch of sesame. All right, cool. Chop up, chop up this one, please. And I am mixing it. So I have lemon. Did I put lemon on this? No. Can I get one more? Lemon or lime juice with the tomato. And the garlic is coming, which I'm going to add. And that will go nicely with the basil. Thank you. It looks nice, doesn't it? Somebody trying to come in. And can, can any of my colleagues let that person in, please? Okay. I admitted the person. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna leave this as well to marinate. Can sit on top. Okay, the avocado. I'm gonna make dressing shortly. Then for me, okay, let's do the red cabbage. Have we got a bowl I can do that in? Any of them got a metal bowls? All right. So here I've got a red cabbage. Into the garlic. Into the garlic. The red cabbage. I'm gonna put the garlic now on the red cabbage. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, the garlic could be chopped up a little bit finer. So I just saw one nice big piece there. Sorry for whoever gets that, but. You want to mince the garlic, right? Really fine. So here I've got a red cabbage and I've got the garlic. And normally, 
I when I'm putting the cabbage through the food processor, that's when I would also put the garlic at that time. So it gets really um it gets really mince. Now, strange thing I'm gonna do now. Anybody see the molasses? You ever open molasses up there? Right here. Cool. So I'm gonna to add to this red cabbage, uh, purple cabbage, anything you wanna call it, but the official name is red cabbage. Here it is. I'm gonna take a before and after picture of the cabbage. You're gonna see the color change. Why it's not taking out? Oh, it's taking. Let's uh, get a picture of everything. Okay, so here is my measuring spoon. And remember, you could always put these in a bottle and shake them around or in a cup and mix them. Not a tablespoon, but a teaspoon. This is beautiful. Love being used molasses. Absolutely love being used in the molasses. I love that real sweet umami kind of flavor from the molasses. And then to this, I'm gonna add just a one pinch of salt. And where's that lime? Let's see, I can get, I'm getting a little bit of juice still out of this. And some zest, you could always put some lime zest in this, right? There you go, and I'm gonna mix this in. There's no oil on it as yet. Oh, well, give me an add. I'm gonna add, you want the water, just a little bit of oil, and I think that was too much because the pan is too heavy and big. All right, so just a little bit of oil you want, and to this I'm adding as well, a little splash of, Right, thanks. Liquid amino, or if you have soy sauce, but I use liquid amino because I don't take wheat and soy sauce has wheat in it. And by the way, with the liquid amino, you don't really need any salt. It's actually salt already, but. I'm gonna taste this to make sure it has the flavor I am looking for. Nice. Nice. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Not tasty. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, good. All right. Nice. Beautiful. I think it's good, Tina. Uh -huh. One question. For the, I hope this doesn't throw you off. For the mixed ultimate, for the dressing, it acts for avocado. What if you don't have it? What's the substitute that you can use? Tofu, sun dried tomato. Carrots, but we're gonna go and do the dressing for the mix ultimate, and we're gonna then I can give you options then, yeah. Thank you. All right, so I still have the aki, which I have not seasoned as yet. Um, so to the aki now, and because my household is actually afraid of the aki and the chocho. -cho, no, not all of them. Not all of them, but it's it's four and two is afraid, so. <laughs> It's a 50-50. It's a I'm gonna really try to season them up nicely, all right? And I'm gonna put the chocho in this glass bowl so you could see what's happening. And it's a lot of chocho, boy. They surely use up the chocho. <laughs> So 
So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't mind. What is chocho? Christophine. It's also called Christophine. Oh, I've got some red onions here. So what I'm going to do now to this, to the aki, I'm going to add all, no, I'm going to add half the onion. And I'm going to add the other half over this one, over the chocho. Right. And that's just to really bring out the flavors in it. I've got red onion as well. I'm gonna need one more white onion for the avocado salad, yes? So if you clean one up for me. Uh, the, the, um, the, I'm putting half of the red onion with the aki. I'm putting the other half with the chocho. Okay. What else have I got here? I've got some peppers. I've got some red peppers here already, Julian. And I'm just gonna make them into fine dice. Yeah, you can put it in four. Anyway, it's gonna find the food process one. I'm really trying to get these, um, what do you call it, peppers fine. Throwing them in the ackee here. I'm gonna throw some in the chocho as well. I have other some more julienne here that I'm just going to throw them all in the chocho long as they are. I've got some yellow ones as well, which I'm going to also throw in the chocho. Oh, no, you can leave them. You can leave it in that. Because <laughs> they won't hear me when you're blending. All right, so some dressing now that I'm going to put on these. So for the aki, Oh, I want a little piece of scotch bonnet for the aki. I'm gonna add about two pinches of salt for the aki, all right? I need to get some chopped parsley for the aki as well. If I had spring onion, I would use some spring onion. I will actually use some dried thyme or some, yeah, I'll use some dried thyme in the aki. In the freezer. All right, so some dried thyme there for the aki. Perfect. So nice scotch bonnet. I'm only gonna use a piece of the green part, green only, because I want them to be able to identify it differently from the aki. And I'm not using this vein, and I want to use the seeds. So just the a little part of the Skin of the green part, all right? It will give it a nice flavor, just a little bit of zinc, but you won't get the heat. The real heat is from the vein and the seed. Yeah. And I would love some basil from outside. Smells really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can take more, but but when you pick the basil, pick off just the leaf and leave the stems. Yeah, so it keeps growing. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, Chandra, if you can find one more of these pans for me, please, so I can season in it. Season the, the actual in it. Maybe in the oven or anywhere. In the oven. Oh. So I'm adding that pepper here to the okra as I that as well. Yeah, Could I also add some okra? Could use as well, but I don't want to use the okra. 
All right, okay, I'll use that then. No, there is one. Isn't that one? When you hit on that part. Oh, no, it's not. So I'm going to add. By the way, what else could be added is some fresh mint. So somebody go tell me some fresh mint. I'll use it in the chocho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just get the greener leaves on top. Okay. Add in some basil here to the aki, which is really gonna uh, make it taste nice. All right. And I'm grabbing some pimento, some grounded pimento. I have garlic and onion powder, which I'm gonna also add. Let me make sure. So the pimento I have is already grounded. All right. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna throw the aki in this big bowl because I need more room to stir, massage it. That's what I'm getting from this little plate. Yep, that's the fresh mint. Smells amazing. If we can just rinse off and get that one piece. So to this, I'm now gonna add um, maybe about a pinch, a pinch and a half of um, grounded pimento to the aki. I'm gonna add a little shake from the, what's this, uh, the garlic powder. And I'm gonna add a little shake of the onion powder. And have we got lime? Yep. I'll take one more lime. Oh, that's it. And a little bit of coconut oil. Oh, you could use olive oil, but boy out here in the Caribbean, we love the taste of our coconut oil. Yeah, we could, we could, I could roll them up and cut them, or we could throw them in whole. But I could cut them. Yeah. So getting all of that goose out. So here we go. Mixing it up. This aki is very buttery. So now, all right, we've got the aki leaving it to marinate. I'm gonna set it up here. Let's taste. Oh my, my. Mm. Tastes really delicious. Mm -hmm. Then now the chocho. Let's see what flavor have we got here. How do we want to take this? Listen to me. This thing is almost like tofu, bland. <laughs> no taste. What I'm gonna add to this is some of this one. The one that I just made for the Caesar. Thank you. So here we've got the fresh mint sliced up and thrown in the chocho. Right, and I'm gonna add some of this Caesar dressing to it. And I'm gonna massage it in. Well, they're the ones afraid of the chocho, but they did a whole big bowl of chocho. They were eating chocho salad in here today. <laughs> All right, just massage it in. All right. All right, this is looking pretty. We're gonna just take a few more pictures now. And then we're just gonna plate it. Let me give the plate a little rinse. So what you will see is that they, they're all springing juices, right? They're all just springing juices. 
because they have the salt in them. So the salt is just sucking out all the water. So this salad, we can frame it with the lettuce. Or if we had kale, this would be really nice with some kale, framed with some kale. I have some, I have kale, but it's in the freezer. Actually, could I use some pepper? If we make some julienne pepper, could I use some pepper to frame it? Or the lettuce, I'll just use the lettuce. You, you can, or you can, or it's up to you if you want to frame this kind of salad, actually. So I'm going to use two lettuce leaves and I'm going to try and get the most out of them. And we can do this in many ways. We can do like a cascade. So a cascade would be, if I put the leaves right here and then everything else just cascades down in that order. Are you seeing, hold on. So a cascade would be, if I start out with the leaves here and then everything else I do just comes down in this order. That is called a cascade of a presentation. But um, I take off this part because it's so big, it, um, it, it disrupts the presentation, all right? You could do it like that, and then you could just start with your, with your vegetables down that way, which we could do, or I could put up both ends. A smaller piece probably looks a little bit better. Right, and we don't want anything hanging over the plate, really. All right, so I'm putting these two, and my, my gloves is finished. <laughs> Can I get another? Okay. Okay. Just let me try and get the gloves on my moist hand. And then the avocado dressing in the meantime. Okay, the avocado dressing is like a five minutes process. All right, so here we go. So let's see now, we have here orange, our yeah, the pumpkin color orange, we've got red, we've got white, and we've got yellow. So we know that right away, this yellow and this one, they, they're too close to be next to each other, right? The orange is very bright and the red is very bright. So we can start with, we can start with, a handful yeah. of okay. We start with a handful right there of that white one. Actually, I'm gonna put it at both ends. So normally we arrange sometimes with a salad, you need to have like a little design in your head that you want to do, right? You have you need to have something. At the moment, I have nothing, but I'm going. All right, so there we go. We have two ends. You can see a little bit of the green, and it looks a little bit coppish with the lettuce there. Then I'm going to put the yellow, right? And because I haven't got much of it, but it makes such a nice border, I'm putting it like that. And you don't want to carry it over with all the water, right? Because the last thing you want on your salad arranged platter like this is a lot of water draining. So try and get drain it, let it drain. All right. Just put a little bit more right here. And then what color would you put next? 
You still have yellow? I know you still have red. Am I talking to myself? Red, okay, red. Somebody says red. So I'm gonna do the red here, like a football. I think I'm making something like a football, it looks like. So I'm looking the red to both sides. And then I'm gonna put that yellow actually in the middle. All right, so I, I still have some of little of that left, which I'll just see if I need it after. And no, the icing on the cake, the aki. And I'm gonna drop it right in that hole in the middle there. Right, so it have a nice little height and that fly. It's mango season in Jamaica. So you get mangoes and you get flies. All right, so what we've got here, now I'm gonna tidy it up, right? So it's it's basically finished, but now I need to tidy it up so it looks neat. All right, what I'm gonna do, all the little pieces sticking out, I'm gonna push them back in. I have a little gap right here that I'll use a little bit of this one to fill a part of the gap, and then a little bit of the, the pumpkin to fill the other part. Right. Oops. Making sure you keep your lines very distinct. You did not use this. Oh! I forgot about this. Ah. So, where am I going to put this now? I'm going to put this here, right next to that lettuce leaf right there, and right here next on this side. And I think I may need to use a spoon. I'll get it back in. I, yeah, put it there. And here. This is a very pretty football, all right? It's gotta be in summer football. <laughs> all right, so let me try and tidy this back up now, okay? Every little loose bit that you see hanging out, out of line. Every little loose bit, you bring it right back in, right? Bring them right back in so you have, when somebody looks at the edge, it might be one straight edge. All right, get out, get everything in. So it's in, we, we try to keep most of it in the line of the plate, right? Obviously the lettuce leaf goes over. But here we go. A nice big salad platter for your event. You can put this on a table and you see the picture on your, if you have not got the book, I'll post some other pictures in the group of oh, picture. Let me take a picture. Beautiful. Okay. So this is, was there another salad that we needed to do? Was there any more that I needed to do? Is there anyone else here waiting for a salad? But this is the rainbow salad. If I'm not talking to myself, somebody can say something. Please bring it closer. Please bring it closer. Wow. Yeah, let me post Rainbow a picture in the group and then I can share it on the screen. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 
Lovely. Thank you. You share the, the ingredients for the sauce. You mean these sauces I just made? You mean these sauces I just made? Or are we talking about now the avocado dressing that I'm about to make? Yes, yes. The, the sauces we've just made. All right. All right. I will. I will. Can you write those down for me, please, Chris, on what I just made? These sauces I just made, like the one with the molasses. Okay, we'll get those through to you. Now, the last thing is the avocado dressing. And my station looks like a bomb. Let me try and tear. <laughs> Let me dry up again. So I have here one avocado. Is the recipe posted there for the avocado dressing? Is the recipe posted there for the avocado dressing on the shopping list? Yes, it is. All right, brilliant. If you just talk me through it. Uh, one avocado, sunflower seeds. Okay. All right, avocado, sunflower seeds. Um, onion, spring I'll onion. Sunflower seeds. Oh, here they are. Grab them, please. Onion, I, I've got to use a white one. Spring onion. Oh, spring onion. I haven't got any, but I'll use some parsley. Garlic. Oh, garlic. Yeah, I've got. Olive oil. That I've got. Salt. Definitely, yeah, uh, all of that. Lime or lemon. Got that. Uh, plant milk or water. Water. So your avocado seed, by the way, is filled with healthy fats. You do not need to throw it in the rubbish. You can um, grate it over your salad. You could use it to make tea. And uh, if you're trying to lose weight, that's a good way to dry it in your dehydrator and um, powder it and use it to make and use it as a tea as a part of your as a part of your program, your weight loss program. It also helps to reduce high blood pressure. Um, anybody see that bullet? Any more bullet? Nope, that's all that for the dressing. That's what you yeah, love the this one. Okay. Oh, this this small one. It's yellow. So I'm gonna use my bullet. Sorry, the cup is yellow because I was making some natural antibiotic in it, and it is completely stained with turmeric. And we have not cleansed it as yet. Right, so what we've got here. I'm putting in the cup one avocado. There's one in already where? Oh, it's all already in the food processor. So guess what? I'm just gonna use the food processor for this recipe because the onion is already in there. It will work just the same. All right, uh, parsley. So what I've got here is the ends that I've cut off from the parsley, you know, the harder sticky ends. I'm gonna chop them up and I'm gonna put them in this recipe because they will blend out nicely. Because I don't have this spring onion. 
Um, garlic. Can I get one garlic, please? Do you use a whole onion or half of an onion? Uh huh? Do you use a whole onion or half of an onion? It just says onion or spring onion. Oh, I use raw onion in this. Or you could use half of the onion. I mean, I probably use half of it. But the thing is, what's going to happen to my other half? <laughs> it's going to get wasted. Oh, and the, the, the sunflower seed, it's about a quarter cup. So, you know, you're supposed to get one raw onion in per day. This is a way you can get your raw onion in. So this is a half cup, but I'm just going to use a quart. I'm, I'm going to only use half of it. Oops, of sunflower seed. A little bit more than half, but. Did you say half cup? Does it have a pumpkin seed as well? OK, so I've got one cup of garlic here. Can you use pumpkin seeds instead of sunflower seeds? I use pumpkin seeds. No, I use sunflower seed. I'm asking if it called for sunflower as well. It calls for sunflower seeds, but can you use pumpkin seeds instead of sunflower seeds? Okay, all right, so that's fine. I've just used sunflower. Okay. Yeah, seeds. And that's a quarter cup. And some? That's a quarter cup or a half cup? Well, it was a little bit more than quarter. This is a half cup, but I didn't full it. But it was a little bit more than half of the half cup. Anything else it called for? You got your parsley instead of your spring onion, garlic, mm -hmm. olive oil, salt, lemon, milk, or water. Okay, so I haven't got the olive oil and I haven't got the salt and I haven't got the lemon. So the olive oil is about two tablespoons, a quarter cup or something like that? It doesn't say. Okay, so here I have about a quarter cup I've got here. What are you oil at the five liters? Huh? Tea. Tea, man. Oh, I didn't hear that at all. Salt, I'm going to add a pinch. Pinch of salt. Lemon. All right, so normally the recipes are two lemons, but some people tell me it's too much lemon for them. So I will use half. I have some. Leftover basil here, I'm going to throw it in as well. I've got some more parsley sticks, I'm going to throw them in as well. Where is the lemon? Any more over this side? And I want my tea very green, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw some more of that bush in it. Well, I eat all parts of the lemon except the seed. And this is a lime. So I'm putting my half a lime in here. This dressing is a very nice dressing, by the way. And you can make this from thin to thick, from thick to thin. I would not miss it. All right, so I'm going to add a bit more parsley to mine. So you see, I'm going on a bit more with the parsley. Curly leaf parsley is what I'm using. And you just want to cut it up because sometimes if you don't cut it, you'll get these lots of strings, you know, like the food processor don't get everything. Or maybe it's my food processor, it's not as powerful. All right, I think that is enough. I think I'm going to get a really nice green color. I am going to put the oil. is in there. 
and uh, I was gonna put something else in there. So if you have, you can use your tofu in here, right? This, you could also use the aki instead, it's quite fatty, if you don't have avocado or if you don't have tofu. So give me a few other options there. Where is the cover? Oh. So with the food processor, I won't need to add any water. All right, I'm blending. All right, so let me just get a spoon. Show you what we've got here. So you have this, which is very thick. I mean, not very thick, but it's thick. Now, if you want this thinner, surely you're gonna blend some more to get all the sunflower seeds blended out, right? So I still have whole pieces of sunflower seeds I'm looking at in this. If you put it in the blender, it will make a better job than in the food processor it appears, right? My food processor, by the way, is not as powerful as it is supposed to be because my electricity is 110 and this is 220. It, this is from the, with the England plug and I, my house is wired for Jamaican stuff. So until then, I'm not getting the full power from my food processor. So it's not as smooth as it could be. But this can be as smooth as a mayonnaise, right? You can blend this out until it is as smooth as mayonnaise. You can add at this stage, if you want to add water to it, or if you want to add a big cup of milk, you add a little at a time until it has the consistency that you want it at. Um, for us, I am happy to go with this taste. Very nice. But it could take a little less lime or a little more salt. So I'm gonna add some of this. That's my homemade Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add some of it to it. Actually, I'm not. One of the persons here have high blood pressure, so I won't add any more. But maybe to my own share, I will add, all right? <laughs> Hi, Davina. What can I replace the salt with? Huh? What can I replace the salt with? Because um, Micah can't take salt. Oh, what can you replace the salt with? Yeah. You can replace the salt with a little bit of celery or spring onion. Okay. That will give it the salt because the recipe actually doesn't call for salt, does it? The one that you have on the shopping list. It, or in the book, it, this recipe actually does not call for salt okay. because normally this recipe is, is a one that I give to my patients in the seven day detox program, mm. right? Okay. Um, and it doesn't normally use salt, but if you can take salt, add some salt to it. Mm -hmm. if, if you can't, then do it without, just put enough spring onion in it, will give you that salty flavor and celery mm. will also do that. Okay. This to me is good to go. I think. Am I missing anything from today's lesson? I am supposed to share with you a recipe on your own time for Friday because Friday it's brownie with ice cream for dessert. But the brownie you will need to make on your own and you can make it from Thursday. And then the ice cream we're going to be making at class Friday morning. So. I am supposed to share with you the recipe for the brownie. That's all we have left to do. Can I share that recipe with you now? Or I would like to talk you through it for the next five minutes or so. Is that okay with everyone? I'm almost sure we're over time. I don't know the time, but I'm almost sure we're, we're over time. We are way over time. Oh no. So shall I share it with you or shall I just post it in the group and you'll follow? Post it in the group. 
All right. And I can send a voice note as well. Plus, this is saying my battery is low. And uh, my household is waiting for meal because dinner time is two o'clock around here. <laughs> so everyone has abandoned me and left me in the kitchen and they're all sitting around the table. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to ask someone to pray for us to close. And I will send a voice note with the brownie recipe that you could do on your own. And then we'll top that up with some ice cream for your Sabbath lunch. Yeah, you're that all that hungry you can't pray. Okay, I'll pray. Father who art in heaven, we give you thanks for this lesson, for this session, for everything that was done. Thank you for Joanna who has come on and shared her knowledge and her um, lovely salad with us as well. Thank you for all the students present here. As everyone go off. Uh, it's a lot that was taught today, Lord, but I ask that everything be remembered in when it is needed, bring it back to their memories. And uh, may the recipes follow through shortly and may everyone be blessed by it, not just themselves, but their household and their community. Bring us back together safely tomorrow, Lord, for another exciting episode of Cooking Vegan Healthy Nutrition and Delicious. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I right, love it. I will post the recipes and I hope you try some of them and they're very Thank delicious. You. All right. So bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.